Okay, sorry, you guys. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I don't even know what to tell you. It's so ridiculous. It's like, it is so ridiculous. I don't know what it is, but by Friday, I will have to hardwire myself in. I'm sitting right next to the router, so I don't even know, like, what the deal is. I don't even know what the deal is. I am hardwired now. And I don't know. Yay. Okay, you see me now. I'm sorry, guys. I don't know. I don't know what the deal is. You know, but I can't. I got to figure it out before Friday because that's crazy. Yay. Hey, Dad. I'm sorry, guys. I don't know. It's I'm in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. I don't know what to tell you. I do not know what to tell you. But I guess on Friday, I guess I better work on getting myself hardwired into wherever I am so that Friday, um, so Friday I can be okay. <clears throat> Hang on one second. I'm just trying to delete this one. Have you guys been getting some crazy like spam things? I've been getting these crazy spam things. Um, how many of you guys have YouTube channels? And, um, you know, it's just anyway. If you have YouTube channels, I've been getting these like crazy Eastern European spam chat. Anyway, I've been getting these crazy spam chats, so that's why I'm where I am. It was odd. It kept repeating like the same five words you said. I said, I don't know. Hi, Renee. Girls, I can't figure it out. I don't know nothing. I you know. anyway, I'm gonna make some. I'm gonna make some embellishments for this this journal. And if any of you guys, I put Care's uh, YouTube channel in the description box below. And you have to ruin your journal cover. Why? What? I know, but it's kind of, I have to tell you, it's kind of stressful, though. Like, you're, like, chatting with people. The next thing you know, you don't know if anybody can hear you or not. So, anyway, I'm going to, so I'm going to finish making this. I love this image. I know it's weird, but I like it. Um. And it's probably too big for that, for that book, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, why do you have to run your journal cover, Malia? What happened? What happened, girl? You can always, you can always, I don't know. You guys know me. I just glue over it or paint over it or do stuff like that. So I'm going to try to make, did you guys watch the wedding video that I made, the, the wedding book I made my daughter? I'm going to try to make one like that. I've, I've, I've cut out all the pieces for it. I just have to sew it. And you guys, I have my sewing machine set up, but I haven't done it. Okay, so that's just how it's going with me right now. What happened? You're making it out of a Monopoly box. And it's fragile and it got and I got tape. I gotta tape the bends. Oh, I hear you, girl. You know what I find those box covers make best is um the ones where you're where you use a cinch or where you do a um you know what I'm talking about? Like where you use a cinch binder or where you um where you do the three ring binder kind of thing that I find it works best that way. I guess I can't even see the line I drew. This is how bad it is. Um, I find that those work better. Uh, old game board boxes work better that way. 
So tell me what else you guys are working on. What, what's on your crafty list? Okay, so I'm, I want to make my daughter that, my little 15-year-old daughter. <coughs> I have all the pieces to make her a denim. You know, where we're moving is cold compared to here, right? So I have all the pieces to make her a denim quilt. Because I was hoping to like sew on it while I'm here. Because I really don't think between me between me and having to go to the big island for that class and <coughs> moving, I don't know if I'll have time to make it. You have a cinch machine? Things on your wish list? I have a cinch, and I'm telling you, I've used it a trillion times. I like it a lot. Um, I think it works good for... Um, you know, like when you want to just put a whole bunch of random paper in a book and you don't necessarily have like a rhyme or reason of it, you want to just put, I think it works good. Now you don't need to put a whole back on this. In fact, I may cut it down, but I don't know. I figured since I had the box, I'd go ahead and cut it anyway. I'm going to have to figure out what kind of clip I'm going to put on it. You're making a fairy junk journal. Oh, that's awesome, Deb. Thank you guys for coming to support me, letting go of my junk. Uh, you know, it's it's so silly. Like my partner said to me this morning, he goes, at some point you're going to have to just like throw some of it away. And I gasped. <laughs> yeah, when you just want to bind a bunch of junk into a journal. That's exactly right, Malia. That is exactly it. When you just want to bind a bunch of junk in a journal. And you just want to find a bunch of junk in a journal. So don't do as I say. Let me see if I can just, I just need to, I need to fix it. Okay. Yep, I'm there with you with the junk in the journal. Guys, I found this huge bag of stuff my daughter brought me back from China and Japan. You know, I told you my oldest daughter and her husband they um, lived in Japan and in China for a while, and they're yearning to go back when they can, which I don't know when that'll be. Right now, they're in Panama. But anyway, um, maybe I'll just cut this off. I think that's what I'll do. Anyway, so I found this box of stuff that she saved me or she brought me from from Japan and China. And it's all kinds of really cool, like, ephemera from, like, like a pizza restaurant that has, like, a Chinese. Like, it looks like American pizza, but it's written in Chinese and just some cool stuff like that. Okay, that's good enough. Now let me figure out which kind. I found a little box of paper clips. I could put together a girl. I may, can I tell you, I almost cried this morning when you told me I was going to have to throw my stuff out. Okay. <laughs> you guys, I threw away all my clothes. Okay. Not threw away, but I donated them to the Salvation Army. He was like, I hate to break the news to you, but at some point you're just going to have to just be done with it and let it go. And I, you guys, I gasped. I was like, what? I was like, what? You guys get me, but you would have been like, I was like, what? Are we, what? Okay, so I think I'm going to put the paper clip here so it can slide into a page. I was like, I have to give my stuff up? What? Yeah, I may do that at the end. I may do that, especially if you guys want to collect any of these really, I have some of the coolest, coolest ephemera and just like, I have some really seriously, I have hoarded, what did you tell me not hoard? What did, What am I supposed to say, Jamie, not hoard? What's okay? You said hoarding is something you said, I, I can't remember because you know me. But you guys would have laughed so hard. If you'd seen me, like, I was like, what do you mean I'm going to have to let it go? I was like, what? And it's like, what? <laughs> yep. 
you guys would have just totally appreciated my would have totally appreciated my response to him like him informing me that I'm gonna have to him informing me that I'm gonna have to let some of my stuff go. I was like, what? What? Oh, you know what I brought with me? Oh, I hope I brought it with me. Yeah, yeah, I brought it with me. I'm going to glue it down, but I brought some double stick tape too. I've got some mad good double stick tape. Pack rat, pack rat, pack rat. Definitely I'm a pack rat. I'm a pack rat. Yep, definitely got that down. Did you guys watch Stacy last night? her tree. Stacy Pink Poodle Crafter. Love her. She decorated her tree. I was like, wow, girls, I don't even know if I'm going to put up a tree this year. I don't even, I'm going to be in my house long enough to get a tree. I guess I could call and say, if you want to put up a Christmas tree, that would be great. <laughs> right? I could call her and say, if you want to do it, I would really appreciate it. But I don't know, guys. I don't even know if that is even in my cards. And it's okay. <clears throat> so the only person that I really have to make something for is my 15-year-old. The rest of them, my older kids, they've gotten so many gifts over the years, you know, but she hasn't because she's only 15. And you guys, I think this is, no, maybe this isn't carpet tape. Maybe it is. I think I got this at, Cre at um, oh my gosh, what's it called? Habitat for Humanity. They have like all kinds of cool stuff here at Habitat for Humanity. And I think this was carpet tape. I think they had boxes of it and I just snagged the roll. Oh my God, you're in both of them. So what am I, what? You're both of them, you're a hoarder and a pack rat. I'm all of it. I'm all of it. I just got to let it go. I, I got to stop judging myself. You guys, the biggest regret I have is like, I've had all this really cool stuff and I haven't used it. That is my big regret. It's not that I've collected it. It's that I haven't used it. And I've had it all this time. That is my big regret. Is that I've had it all this time. And I just didn't make good use of it. All right. I may have to clip this down a little bit. I may have to add some more double stick tape. Maybe I'll add some more double stick tape there. So no tree for you. No, I love you guys. I may not be into the commercialism of Christmas, but I love Christmas. I love the decorations and all that. But you guys this year, I just can't even, I can't even get myself to like, I don't even know what it's going to look like when I get there. You know, I do not know what it's going to look like when I get there. So I can't even like, I can't even think about it, but I really enjoyed seeing Stacy put up her tree last night. I really appreciated it. it. Made me feel like, also, I don't know, being in the tropics, if you've ever lived anywhere else, you don't feel so much Christmas spirit. Like, the fall kind of whatever type of spirit you think you're going to feel. You don't feel that here. You just don't. So I'm just going to see where else I can put a little bit more of that, of this double stick carpet tape. And I may have to clip this damn thing down for a good while because the paper clip is a big one. Okay. Jamie, I'm excited to see what you do with that fabric, girl. I've hoarded that fabric. I've collected that fabric for so long, and I used to take it out every now and then and just look at it and love it up. Hey, Elizabeth, how are you, girl? Did you figure out what you were going to make for your... You know the other thing I thought about, Elle, that we made with kids, and, and it's so super easy, but you need some contact paper and magazines, is we made placemats, you know, like the over and under, over and under weaving with kids and then we had them or we did them like on a piece of artwork and just said what they're thankful for and then we put contact paper over it 
and we used them as placements. And I think you can do that in any age. Okay, I love her. I love her big lips. She's going to go on that book, but whoever gets this book knows me well enough to know that you don't have they don't have to live in there. Linda, I am decor and making. I'm going to I have a couple projects to finish. So this is for the Disabled Artist Foundation auction in December. I finally like got it together to like find a journal that I had somewhat done, right? And um, I'm just gonna glue the pages, you know, the pockets down and I'm making some embellishments, making some eyeball embellishments, making some um, lip embellishments, whatever my cool funky the cool funky stuff I've kept for however long. You guys know me and my random keeping. Paper lanterns and, and decoupage of napkins. Hey, that's always good. Do you know what you might want to think about, though? Does your daughter have to do a Christmas craft with them? Start collecting those jars. I mean, I made we made the coolest votives. I'm telling you, we made them out of um, we made them out of baby food jars, but you could use ragu. You could use what any kind of jar, just have the kids bring a jar. And that's what theirs is going to be. And, you know, cut up those pieces of tissue paper and it's random. Okay. I'm not going to put a purse. It's got to have a couple of eyeballs in there though. Oh my gosh. I found the most fantastic picture of an eyeball the other day. I was like, oh, need this. It's like so ridiculous. It's like I can't even wait to move and I'm getting pictures of eyeballs. This is a really good eye. These are really good eyes. And this one's a good eye. You can't have a journal from me without an eye, at least a junk journal without a random eyeball. I love, don't get me wrong, I love digital digi journals. I love it. I just have the crappiest printer that it's just not worth it. Do you know what I mean? You know, like sometimes you go, oh, that's easy. But other times it's like, no, you're going to make large paper bag snowflakes and embellish them. Ooh, that's awesome, too. Oh, my gosh. The turkey in high heels is excellent, too. All right. I may have to do her. Okay, let's see. I got to have more than brown eyes. Okay, I got a brown eye here. I like that brown eye. Here's a green eye. This is a blue eye. Wow. I didn't realize I cut up so many brown eyes. Oh, here's a here's a nice one. Let's see. I like this one better. Guys, I found bags of my stuff. It's so ridiculous. It is beyond ridiculous, the stuff that I've kept. It is, yep. You guys know me. It's it's ridiculous. And I have a, do you guys want to really laugh? I have a pile of magazines sitting over there. And I said to my partner, I said, and they're like magazines I've cut up, right? For me, they're, they're like, I'm like, don't, I said, don't, don't pack them or don't throw them away yet. I may, I may get the urge to craft one night. And he's just like, okay, when, like, he doesn't say anything, but I know he's like thinking, whatever, sister. You know, he's like, it's like, whatever floats your boat. He's like, anyway, he may, he, he rolls with it, you guys. He totally, absolutely rolls with it. So it needs to be like so He rolls with me. He doesn't, no criticism from him. He rolls with it. He totally rolls with it and just does whatever. Can't imagine where I keep it all. Girl, I haven't neatly, well, Ramp, I have it in my own version of neatness, which only works for me. My own version of chaotic collection. I have it in my, I have it in different bins and tubs. That's how I store my stuff. Because honestly, you guys, in the tropics, there's bugs. So if you... If you want anything not to be bothered by bugs, you got to keep it in airtight containers. That's what that's what I do. Okay, I have to do this. Whoever gets this journal is going to be like, "What the hell?" But everybody needs a turkey in high heels.
Yeah, I am a super good packer. I am a really good packer. My kids are really good packers too. Um, yeah, but the thing is coming from here, it's one thing if you collect a few little treasures of somebody's. Coming from here, it is just a ton of money to ship everything. I have shipped some stuff to myself. Don't get me wrong. I wasn't able to let go of everything because girls, I just couldn't. It was just me and my ridiculousness. Okay, I've done that one. I've done that one and the turkey. Okay, so then I'm going to put these aside. May do more, but I'm going to put them aside. Um, I have packed a bunch of stuff. Um, and, and you know what? If I don't get around to it, if it's something I can't live without, or I feel like when I get back to North Carolina, I can keep some of it and share some of it with you guys, I, I may take some of it. But you guys, I have an enormous collection of ephemera from the 50s, 40s, 50s, and 60s. Enormous collection. And I have just random weird stuff. I mean, you guys, I'm weird. You guys have been collecting my stuff. You know how weird I am. <laughs> you see it firsthand. You're like, we got it. Weird. You think your living room looks great until somebody visits? All right. Bye, Elizabeth. We love you, girl. Um, you guys, the cool thing about Hawaii is people really don't come over to visit. And when they do, they want to sit outside. So you don't have to worry about it. As long as you've got like a little lanai or you've got a, a little place outside, people just... It's hot here, you guys. People don't, they don't just come and bar. They don't, they're not like thinking, hey, let's go to your house and sit inside. Okay, that one's good. I made it a little bit smaller, but I think smaller is better. Um, so, so on my Friday sale, I'll tell you what I have. Wallpaper books. A lot of them. I can't take them with me, guys. And I love them. Some of them are so fabulous. Wallpaper books. Um, some wallpaper packs because some of the books are like so big that there was just no way. And I had already cut them up to use them. Fabric. And then I have the most random, some dyes. And I have the most random collection of just oddities. And <clears throat> that's what that's what I'll have on Friday. So, and I may, maybe Saturday if I can't do it all on Friday. You love weird curl. I'm as weird as they come. You know, I don't think I'm weird. I really don't think I'm weird. But then I meet other people and I go, God, I think, you know what I mean? Like other people's aesthetic. And I'm like, oh gosh, maybe I'm really weird. Like my partner, he's so funny. He's an amazing painter. I should show you guys some of his paintings sometimes. He's a really good painter. And um, he paints all kinds of things. And he paints for a living. Like he paints, he's painting portraits of somebody's, somebody's, somebody wanted a Renaissance style oil painting of their Borzoid, their Russian wolfhound. And he did an amazing job. Anyway, so this morning he was like, <clears throat> I was like, help me clear one side of the room, like one side of my collection. I said, let's just take out everything that I want to keep or, or that I haven't really gone through. And then let's only put all the stuff I'm going to be letting go of over here. And you guys, he found a bag of, this is how weird I am. He found a bag of like mesh, you know, like the mesh that you get from vegetables or the mesh you get from like your fruit or whatever. I have a bag of it, you guys, because I've sewed it in my journals before. I use it as painting tools. And he goes, this is your painting tool collection, right? <laughs> Yes, Val's hit the nail on the head. Yet yeah, we do. We go and visit people not to go and judge their house or housekeeping. Always, always, always. But we definitely, hey, but we do judge on the grinds though, Val. You know we judge on the grinds. We're like, that was the most Ono. <laughs> yeah. We judge on the grinds. We're like, we're going back over there. Their food was amazing. Yeah, it's been really hot here. I don't know. How is it for you on Oahu? At least in the area of, but where I live is generally the cooler area of this island, but it is not. It's been hot as anything. Oh, no. So he was like, he was like, these are painting tools. And I was like, you can just let them go. And he's like, oh, no. 
He goes, and I was like, he says, they don't, he goes, if you want to take up, you guys, that, that is him. Okay. My weird collection of random meshes that I was, who knows what I was using it for. I did paint with some of it. Some of it I put into that plaster, you know, you know, the plaster for, uh, mixed media. Okay. Okay. I think I fussy cut this cardboard box to see if this, let's see how much too big it is. It's not that too big, just a little bit, just a tiny bit. It's been super humid where you are. It, the Kona winds have been blowing so bad here. I mean, it's just dead. It's like dead wind. I don't know. It's like the Santa Ana winds, as somebody pointed out the other day. And I'm definitely having my allergy reaction to it. My poor little daughter, she's like having it too. She's like, my eyes just are watering for no reason. I'm like, I get it. And if you have any sort of like upper respiratory things, which I do, it's definitely difficult when they blow. So the only Christmas project <coughs> I'm going to make, aside from these finishing these journals for the Disabled Artist Foundation, is my daughter's quilt. So I saved these random. So I used to do art fairs here every weekend. Oh my gosh, talk about kill you. I used to go sell my jewel my jewelry every weekend. And um, I made myself a tablecloth out of jeans, out of blue jeans, all different color blue jeans. So, and it's big, it fit like two, how big are those tables? Six foot tables or eight foot tables? It fit two of them. So, I have those and I've also saved some other jeans. So I may not be able to finish it, but I'm gonna try to start it so that I can at least like have something to wrap in a box for her. It's funny, it might be lips. Gosh, you're so funny. That's a turkey, that is a turkey. It is a turkey, it's a turkey in high heels. You know me, Jamie, I collect weird stuff. It's a turkey in high heels. It's like, you guys were, I am I found this years ago. This is how bad my hoarding, my, what do you call it? Pack ratting is. I'm going to stop calling it hoarding, Jamie. I'm going to stop calling it that. My pack ratting. This was like one that I found. I bet you if you go back and watch an old live stream, you'll see it in there. I figure there's no time like the present than to. And I think I'm going to put the notch on the top up here. There's no time like the present to uh, to have a space for your turkey, for your turkey behind. For your turkey behind. So I think I will come back and if I, if I get, the spirit moves me. I want a tiny paper clip. These are big, mon big Mondo paper clips. And I know, I know girls, I must have a tiny one in here. This cannot be large paper clips. Good, here's one. Um, so once I move, I think maybe, maybe I'll celebrate. Maybe I'll tell my, my kids we'll celebrate. My other kids don't care, but they just, I usually just send, I think we've just kind of decided money. How many of you guys are to that point? Is that terrible that we're all to the point of like, our kids just need money. We're just not going to, we're not going to invest in anything else. The turkey in high heels is a work of art. It totally is. Guys, I'm telling you. Okay. How many of you guys have cut up a bunch of cool stuff? Okay. You guys can, you'll get this, but nobody else will. Okay, you've cut up a bunch of really cool random stuff and you're like going through your stuff to let it go and you're just like but i love her she's like whatever the weird picture is it 
anyway. That's what you're doing. Well, my older kids are, they're both married now and they don't really, last year I bought my daughter, a, my middle daughter, the one that got married during the pandemic, I bought her a KitchenAid because that's what she wanted. And I bought, I had ordered some accessories to go with it, but they were out of them. So maybe I'll go back and get some accessories for that for her. Um, I was thinking of maybe making her a Christmas ornament. I mean, it doesn't really mean anything to your kids until you're gone, but <laughs> my kids won't even appreciate my crafting until I'm dead and gone. I'm sure you guys will be like, my mother, she was, <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys, you know, you guys know. My kids probably really think that I am out of my mind and that's okay. They can, because maybe I am kind of, I don't know what I did. I had some really good clothespins, but I have for the life of me know where I put them. Your kids are all living home again and they all want Nintendo switch for Christmas so they can play games with each other in their own bedrooms. Oh my gosh. You guys, the only thing I won't buy my kids is video game stuff. I, and some of my kids are really into gaming, but I just refuse. I'm just not doing it. It's like, I just, no. And aren't they kind of expensive? You guys, I don't know. I know my, I know Hottie's sons play game, video games with each other. I know that, that that's how, and my sister's kids, they do too. But yes, look, she's going to, this, this journal is going to have a turkey and high heels. It's going to have the big lip. It's going to have the eyeballs. It's going to be, it's going to be told. And if I can find the legs, it'll have legs too. It'll totally be decked out my style. It'll be a decked out. Okay. I just have to decide, you know, the hardest part sometimes to decide is which way you want the clip to go. Like, I think the clip needs to go this way. So this eyeball goes into the journal that way. Right? Hi, Mary Ellen. They're $300? What? You guys. Yeah. Now, I did buy my kids' phones. I mean, I'm not going to say, like, I'm totally anti-whatever, but I just feel like I just didn't want it in my house because I used to, when I would visit my sister, her kids were so into it that it was, like, it kind of interfered. I'm just speaking from my own experience, and I'm not saying your kids are like this because everybody's kids are different. But my sister's, when my kids were there with my sister's kids, it was almost like it was an obsession and it was like you couldn't um i need a small paper clip and there's got to be another one in this whole thing how could there not be a little paper clip in my whole bag of paper clips um it, it was just it became like an obsession like so much so that like when dinner time came around or whatever it was and I, you guys you have to realize for a large part of my life i lived in new york city and when you live in a city like that, when you live in New York City, there's a lot of things to draw you away from paying attention to anything, right? There's so much um, stimulus. I just didn't want, I, I just didn't want my kids never to want to leave the house. I, I have my own things, you guys, and I'm not telling you what to do because you have to do you. You know, I'm a big proponent of you do you, whatever works. Like I have one friend, her son that is the only way her son will, um, he has like some sort of ADD and, or some sort of thing like that. And it's the only way that he can really interact with his friends is by playing those games online with them. Like you're saying your kids are in the, in the other bedroom or whatever, but you have to do you.
thirty two an hour. What? What did I miss? Don't tell me what you're going to tell me. Don't tell me what you're going to do. Tell me what you have done. Laugh out loud. What? Well, good. I mean, if you and your son, look, my sister's kids do not live in the same house anymore. And they all play those games with each other across. I just didn't want it in my house. I'm sorry. No, nothing personal. Also, too, you guys, my, he couldn't, the television was on. He couldn't even carry on a conversation. So add that gaming device into my life. Oh, hell no. My kids would have never, it would have been like a nightmare for them. <clears throat> and that's Brian. Oh my gosh. Thirty to an hour. Oh my gosh, Jamie, prayers, girl. We will do we will do the woo-woo for your daughter to get that job too, girl. That is super awesome. Guys, after all my measuring, I think I put it on the wrong way. Did I? I hope not. Okay, let's see. I'm going to put more down here. That's awesome. $32 an hour in her car. Nannying is difficult. Nannying is like healthcare providing. You know, it's like I have a friend that is a elder care, like she does elder care. Oh my gosh. She is always working. Like, I don't even know if she ever gets a day off. There's always something, you know, something that goes on that is like dire straits. And so... I hope she gets it, Jamie. That'd be awesome. Okay, so this goes this way. Yay. We have the eyeball and the chicken. Maybe I need to put some more tape up here. Let's see. <clears throat> Hi, Liz. How are you? Yeah, I I definitely think that's awesome, Jamie. And she's so smart. I bet she'll get it. She is getting ready to start schooling for massage therapy and to get a dual license. Oh, wow. I have a really good friend that's a doula, and she loves it. She absolutely loves it. You know, I think in many other countries than here, that type of uh, job is so revered. I don't know what it is about our American health situation or healthcare situation that we just want to give everybody more meds instead of trying to treat them. So being a doula and having a really beautiful birth without all that, I think is amazing. Okay, hopefully, hopefully, hopefully this is a good one. Hopefully we've got this one down. After you had Lily, you consider doing that? I think it's awesome. Well, thanks for hanging out with me, you guys. I was like, I just, when he was helping me go through all my stuff this morning and he was like looking at this and that and the other, and I saw this box, I had this box with a journal in it with a bunch of stuff to stick in the journal. I was like, if I don't sit down and do it now, it is not going to get done. And then I will not send it. And then it will, I don't know what, you know. So I'm just grateful that you guys are hanging out with me. And hopefully I'll get this little journal done. Now you guys know my journal is not going to be like anybody else's. So you guys are going to go there and collect some beautiful journals. And then you'll get the trashy one. That's mine. <laughs> The Trashy Journal. Guys, I did donate some of my really cool treasures. 
um, I donated some things, some other journals that I have or have purchased or were given that you guys, I can't take it all with me. Not that I don't want to, because you know I do, girls. You know I do. Okay, so if I put that clip this way, then I can go into the journal this way. And go into the paper this way. So I need to put the clip way down here. Um, yep. So do I want this journal? Do I want this eyeball to go up and down? Yours made is you made it. You made one too. Let me let me read this back. I'm sorry. I'm hi, Mary Ellen. I'm moving to Asheville, North Carolina. You're going to be fighting over the turkey with high heels. What's going to be in the journal? I'm thinking of painting. I'm thinking of doing a painting on the front of it. I haven't quite decided if I'm painting on the front of the journal or not. Or maybe I'll get my hottie to paint on the front of the journal. We were talking about it. I said, will you do painting on the front? I said, I'll do whatever you want. Can I tell you guys, I'm really blessed with him. He's my second time around. And I have to tell you, Been the, he's the biggest blessing in my life, besides my children. And, you know, he completely gets me. The fact that he was, like, making fun of me this morning. What did he do a minute earlier? You guys would have laughed until you cried. Oh, I asked him to bring me a paintbrush. Let me show you when he brought me. Shoot. He was making fun of me. I said, I need a paintbrush. So he, he ended, I said, I need a paintbrush for my glue. Okay, this is the one he initially brought me as a joke. Okay, can you see it? There is no tip on this one. This is like, this is what he brought me. <laughs> and I started laughing. And he goes, he goes, mission accomplished. He was laughing. Okay, what do you guys, it's a turkey and heels fancy. Enough. What are the die cuts of? What are you talking about me? Like what I have die cuts of? Are you talking about uh, other people's die cuts? I wasn't paying attention. Well, I have a bunch of stuff, you guys. I'm gonna I'm gonna put a pack of a bunch of stuff in it. I'm gonna put some of my you know what I might do? Hmm. Let me see. If I can get it together, I might put a pack of my I have a pat. I have some German book pages from the 1800s. I told you guys I have like this collection of stuff that I just whatever. No, the weirder the better for me. Whatever. Um, I have some. Have some. Oh, I'll definitely give some of my a pack of Asian book pages if I can find my my German 1800s. Paper, I'll put that in there. I have maybe I'll put some painting papers. I don't know. You guys will get a random collection of whatever else on the side, isn't it? Everybody else is ephemera. Mine is like I don't know. Mine's scavenged. You you, you guys get my drift. You get my paleo. But no, it'll come with some stuff. Oh, please. Yes. Come and visit me. You guys, when I get there, I will, all are welcome. Because I have my own little separate studio from my house. I'm super excited about it. I'm excited about that. I have... Uh, I'm excited about it. I'm excited that I'm going to... More than anything, I'm excited that I'm going to be able to set up my studio. And I'm not going to have to take it down. I just want one more small clip, only because a small one will be better. Here, come on, universe. I must have one in this box. But I will, you'll see, Carol will do a flip through, or maybe I'll do a flip through before I send it all off to her. Her um, auction isn't until December. I want to say it's December 12th, but I'm not a thousand percent sure. What did you get your...
<laughs> Did I get my will changed yet? Oh, God, you guys, we've been talking about that. You want Tim Holtz doll ephemera? That's what you like? You guys make your own ephemera. You make your own. It's definitely more uniquely you. <clears throat> At least that's what I think. But what do I know? Now, I'll put some of my... I'll put together an ephemera pack for the for the journal. And I'm going to... If I finish the quilted one, I, I'm going to try... You know, if you guys go back and watch that video, I think, I think it's called Because I Said I Would, because I didn't want a ton of people to know what it was. It was me making a journal for my daughter's wedding, but, I, but I'm whispering because I'm making the, I made the damn video at like four o'clock in the morning when I finished her. I, I made her, we made her, I made her, a, I made a wedding cake. I made her cake, Blake made her cake toppers. We, he drew them. Um, I made everybody a pair of earrings from her because she and her boyfriend met playing dungeons and her husband playing dungeons and dragons and so they had i painted them as their he drew them as their characters and then i made earrings out of them so i was up till four in the morning but if you look at that i'm going to try to make another journal similar to that i have i have i have the stuff i started putting it together and i dyed all the paper for it but we'll just see how far i get along on it some cluster videos. Okay, let's see. Who does good cluster videos? Jessica Rapp does amazing cluster videos. I mean, she has some clusters. Um, everybody has their own style of clusters. You know, I love Jessica. I, I mean, she's one of my favorites. Um, because I haven't watched videos in so long. And when I am watching videos, I'm not watching crafting videos. You've been watching Jessica. I love her. She is the nicest, nicest, nicest person. I love her. Yeah, that if you look at that one, so that's the other video, that's the other journal I'm gonna make. So that'll be for more, that'll be for somebody that doesn't necessarily want eyeballs and turkey butts. Okay. No eyeballs and turkey butts in that one. I love I love Jessica so much. She's awesome. She's so talented. She's so sweet. She is the nicest, nicest person. Care has a video on on, on uh, clusters. Okay, um, Laura's saying Care has a video on clusters. Guys, I haven't watched videos in so long. There's probably tons of people that have cluster videos. Who doesn't wear eyeballs? Well, no, the other one is like made from a quilt square, made from a quilt square, made with all dyed paper. Um, it's just, it's, I made one for my daughter as her, as her guest book, because she was having a small wedding, you know, because during the pandemic, we could only get, we could only gather with 10 people or something like that. I think she had 11, if you count the officiant. Um, and so I made a bunch of tags in it and we all sat around and everybody wrote something to her. I put some recipes in it. I put some, I put a couple map pages in it. Oh, APG has cluster videos. Go watch AP, APG. I love your videos. I, lo I like hanging out with you. I mean, you make great videos. Guys, I have not watched. Okay, the the length of me watching videos lately has been, I watched Stacy with her Christmas tree, I watched her auction the other day. I um, what else did I do? I 
I watched videos on flying with your animals, with your pets. <laughs> I've watched, um, sometimes I have it on in the background, you know, like I watched Elizabeth the other day, Never Hopeless with Elizabeth. It's awesome. She was doing a ramble. I watched her. Oh, I listened in the background of my packing. Um, it, it's just like whatever I, it's not, it's not as, uh, I listened to Michelle Scott the other day when she was doing her sale. Um, that's what I listened to. I mean, I haven't, guys, I can't even get it together to do like, regular stuff. Okay. Maybe I should put this one in there. Now, usually I have a whole bunch of watches or clocks. But what the heck was that? I don't even have any. Oh my gosh. There's no sad in your videos, APG. You're awesome. I laugh so hard watching your videos. What are you talking about? What is your one, your musical interlude? I love that one. That one, if I really need to cheer me up, I just go back and listen to that and I laugh. Okay, the other thing that I'm obsessed with, you guys, is African dance videos. Okay, you guys know my mom is a professional dancer and all that stuff, right? When I was a kid, she made us take African dancing from everybody, African dancing. But I, I'm obsessed with African. But this one song that I like that people dance to, my partner calls it a pom pom pom. Because he says that's the beat. A pom pom pom. It seems ridiculous. I'm gonna see I'm gonna grab some more stuff from over here. all right let's see what else all right these have to dry these have to dry the turkey butt and the lips they all have to dry and the eyeballs they all have to dry I find some I must have some clock that's the hard part for me it's like i found this bag and i was super excited i was like oh eyeballs i only have one lip in there Yeah, drinking liquids can be yes. I, I trust me. I've laughed so hard at your in your videos where the liquid is a is a, is a, a detriment. I can get it. Okay, so let's see. Let me see what I can put in here. I have a whole box of stuff. Okay, I may paint on the front of it. I just don't know yet. I just haven't quite decided what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna paint on it because I have boxes and boxes of stuff right here. Um, no, it doesn't seem like it's buffering now. Has it, have we had any buffering issues now, you guys? I don't know. I think it's good. I think it's good for right now. Thank you. I appreciate it. And no, they said it's buffering a little. Oh, you yeah, unplug the extender. Okay. You guys, we had to get this crazy internet stuff because our daughter was going to, it's buffing every now and then. Ugh, I don't even know what to do with it. We had to get this whole thing because our daughter was going to school remotely. So in her remote schooling, we had to like, yeah. I know I have some tags in here that I've glued on and made. Let's see what this makes. Some crazy what makes you happy. What is this? Right, here's some painting papers. Here's some Japanese book pages. Here's some more pockets. Here's some painting paper. Oh, I'll put one of these tags in. Remember when I made those tags in a video? This is like one of those tags that I made in that video. Oh, and I'll, I'll sign this. These are my, my ATCs. I say I'll sign it, but maybe I won't. Okay, here. Look. Oh, 
I don't know when I made this, you guys. Probably made it in 2020, maybe before then. I did a video. It was like, because this is like a really cool, this is like a magazine, gesso magazine overlay or whatever. So I'll just put, I'll put 2020 on it. It's probably, maybe it could have been 2019 when I did it. Put that in here. Let me make sure it's all it's dried. These I love. If you guys ever find these, these are great. You get them at Chinese New Year. These little envelopes. And this was from a year, a few years ago when it was the year of the dragon. I love them. Let's see. Did I sign this? Of course not. Because that would make my life just way too easy. There's a video with these in it. I just can't even remember. I'll look it up, though. I'll put it in there. I'll look it up in there. I'll look it up in a little bit. There's a video where I made that. So let's see. Oh, I know what I have. Oh, let me see. Where are they? I saw them not that long ago. Where are they? <laughs> paper clips so you gotta have the random here i have these crocodile ones i don't even know where i got them what is african pattern and colored fabrics what what did i miss what did i miss the african fabric and colored patterns part what did i miss Oh, Cassie, you got to watch Jessica. She's awesome. She is super awesome. Okay, cool. That one has an alligator clip on it. And then I have some, like, elephant ones. Isn't it crazy, the weird stuff we have? I have elephant ones. I have alligator ones. I have light bulb ones somewhere. And you guys, she's as nice as her videos are good. I mean, she is the nicest. The absolute nicest. I'm going to have to go look for all my fun paper clips because I know I have bunches somewhere around here. Okay. So this one's going to have a pineapple. This one has a pineapple one. Let me see. You guys, these were like little tiny coin envelopes. Where is it stuck together? should stick some stuff in it. What should I stick in it? Here, I'll put these. Here's a tell it like it is card. Let me see. Because I have so much junk around here, I should be able to find like everything in like a split second. And yet, somehow I cannot. Here, let's stick this drag. That dragonfly, will the dragonfly fit in there or the dragonfly fit in there? Okay, cool. 
have the dragonfly and we have this. I think I'm going to put some washi tape on it so that it... The humidity here makes everything stick together. The humidity does make everything stick together. Hey, Tammy. How many of you guys live in humid areas where your stuff sticks together? This is it today. I mean, these they shouldn't even stick together, but they do. Put some washi tape over it so that it won't stick together. Maybe I need a bigger piece. How are you, Tammy? What's going on in your world? It's wet and rainy there. Oh, it's hot and humid here. You know, like craft supplies just don't act the same way in Hawaii than I think they do. Like I've watched a million people use Mod Podge. I cannot use it in Hawaii to save me any time. It, it gets, it just sticks to it. Yeah. And like, I'm like trying to peel open this brand new thing of washi tape. Same thing. It's like, what? Hey, Deborah, how are you? So you ordered a Bronco, a Bronco bracelet. That's awesome. So what is everybody's favorite holiday gift to give and receive? Well, I love to give handmade things, but I was, we were in a, a chat the other day and somebody mentioned that it was a, you're not a fan of Mod Podge. It's too, right? Scoot up. Sorry. I'm, like, I'm sorry. Guys, I'm sorry. I'm like, I got my mess going on. You guys are getting all the mess. Just trying to stick this envelope together so that it doesn't um just trying to like add a little washi tape to this envelope so that it so that when i put stuff in it when whoever gets whatever's in it it doesn't like stick together get what you know what i mean my favorite i love to give handmade but i don't like what i don't like to give when i give handmade is handmade to people that don't that think that handmade's dumb you know, like we all have people like that in our lives that maybe they don't necessarily truly love or understand giving handmade because they don't give it. So maybe I'll tape the page. If I tape the page, it'll work better. Hey, Miss L. I think they changed, honestly, I think that they changed the recipe of Mod Podge. I do. I think the, those people don't get nothing from you again. Oh, girl, I could tell you some of my handmade stories that would make you, it would, it would, it would be disturbing because you would be like, what? You'd be like, what happened with that? You'd be like, what? What did you, what? You gave that to who and what did they do? That is, that is, yeah. Um, you know what I started doing, and I haven't, I didn't, I'm not doing it this year, but what I started doing with my nieces and nephews is I started making them a Christmas ornament every year because I figured that one Christmas ornament is like, you know, like, getting a Christmas ornament, you don't, you don't, may not appreciate it as a, as a young person, but as you age, you'll appreciate it. And then, you know, they'll have something from you. Sorry, guys, my table's it's just a mess now. See, random. What did I tell you guys I am? Abstract random. Like I loved these cards. I got them when I was in Las Vegas. They were like two for one. I've put stuff on the back and made them plain, but I just like the, the, um, I gave them away at like 
I can't remember the hotel we were staying in. Um, so I, so for a while I was making handmade Christmas ornaments for everybody. And um, I think some of them really liked it and some of them, I don't know. I mean, I never got like a, oh, I don't like that. But um, I think they did. I mean, who doesn't like getting ornaments, you know? Who does not like getting ornaments? Maybe I'll glue some of these together. And You love quilts? My sister retrains me when I visit them. Remember to cover Eve and turn off lights. Uh, well, maybe I can just glue these together with some Mod Podge. I mean, hi, Sonia. Someone please make you a quilt. Girl, you know what? When I move to North Carolina, I am going to do a whole lot more quilting. Maybe you guys can quilt along with me. I have, I have made so many quilts in my life um, and I love making quilts and I love quilts in general. I think, um, I think it's a lost art. I have quilts made by my grandmother, by my great grandmother. Um, I don't know if I have any made by my mom. She made quilts for a while. I remember she made all the kids one. I don't know if any of my kids save them. Right, yes. I, so maybe we can all quilt together. You guys, I'm more of a quilt as you go kind of person. So if you're like a traditional quilter, I probably will make you cringe. Because I'm like, I like it down and dirty, fast and furious, if you know what I mean. I really, I really do like, I really do like that option of like getting things done quickly. Well, maybe when I am going to make this denim quilt for my daughter. And if I do, I, I mean, I've already cut up the pieces for it. I just haven't, haven't actually sat down to quilt. Um, but I, I could, I could certainly do put it on a live stream when I'm working on it and you guys can guys can pipe in and give me your 411. Um, but it's not that hard, Sonia. You just have to make a commitment to doing it for yourself. You have quilts, but you've only sewed on paper. You know what, Jamie? They have a paper piecing process. And I haven't done it in years, but I, when I move to North Carolina, we'll do it with you. It's super easy. It's where you actually sew your fabric on paper. And um, it's like how when people want to make really intricate pieces or small pieces fit together, it's super fun. Do it and you'll be up on the screen, girl. I have, that's the only Christmas present I want to get made. Is that one. Because I usually make Christmas cards too. That is like come to the zero. It's come to the zilch here. You come to the zilch. Zilch Christmas card making. Because I'm using this PVA glue, I would... Aileen's tacky glue is my go-to. I love it. Um, it works really good for me. I don't ever have issues. But I don't know where my bottle of big, my big bottle of tacky glue is. But my hottie found me this. Now, this is great for bookbinding projects, but it's a little thin for what I'm doing now. It's just a little bit thin. So what I'm doing now is I'm just going to clip all these random bits and pieces together with a paper clip that will then could double as a 
journaling tab, or, but it, I've got to, I got to let it dry. Come on, sister, you got to dry it. This is when I really need my, I really need those clothespins, but I have no idea. Yeah, you guys, I'm, I'm like, yeah. I don't even know if that's going to hold it together enough to. Oh, I'll post when I'm going to start quilting. Ooh, that sounds so nice, Sonia. You know what? Some of those fabrics are really difficult to find now. Those Alice in Wonderland fabrics or fabrics that you've had for like a long time. Like those small pieces of Raggedy Ann fabric that I had, those were from like the 60s or 70s. I got them from a friend that was an avid. Oh, I hope that dries. Usually I get out of, and then I usually put like triple thick on it or something, but there's no triple thick coming this day. Is it triple thick curls? I don't even know where my triple thick is. I do not know where my triple thick is. Love that triple thick. Or stickles or one of those. I'm going to just let it dry right here and then I'm going to put it in here. But at least I know that's what's going to go on there. I'm going to put a paper clip on it to begin to stop. And I'll go to the next one. Maybe this one's better. Aww. I have a... Um, I have made a i've made quilts out of everything one of my nephews was really into bugs bunny okay really into bugs bunny so i made him a bugs bunny one i think you just have to go through whatever works for you there's no right or wrong in quilting that's the thing okay if you like junk journaling and you like doing this kind of like random stuff like we're doing here make your quilts that way too don't get caught up you can get caught up in the quilt snob club and girls i'm going to tell you something quilts were made out of necessity my grandmother made, and they, you know, they made them out of necessity. They made them out of feed sacks. They made them out of like all kinds of random stuff. You know, it's not like, yeah, so you, you can't, you can't belong. I'm just saying, please do not belong to the Quilt Snobs Club and think that you have to make it. You know, I say find the quilting process that works for you or that you can work with. Okay. Because the problem is this only you have to, you're not, it's not like you're going into business for yourself making quilts. And if you do, maybe you'll go back and be the, in the, in the quilt snobs club. But I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't be in the quilt snobs club. Like how could that possibly help you? It's like being in the art snobs club or saying that, you know, a journal can only be made a certain way or a, see, like this came from one of my quilting books. See, that came from one of my quilting books. That came from one of my quilting books. You guys, I dyed these really thin pages, and I love, they, they make that crinkle. They make a crinkle. I love it. When one of my eyeballs dries, I'll put it on this one. That sounds bad. One of my eyeballs dries. Maybe I'll put the clean up parts on the side. And I tried to add like regular scrapbooking paper tags, not my not my total 100% recycled. Because you guys know me, I'm all about the recycling. So some of them, oh look, somebody gave me a, a Banco de Mexico, uno peso bill. Wow, what year is it from? 1961. Oh, that's cool. Here's a pie crust recipe. Maybe I'll put those in there. That's good. Let's put a pie crust recipe. Everybody needs a pie crust recipe. Yeah, don't belong to the Quilt Snobs Club. I will quilt along with you guys as long as we're not we're not paying homage to the quilt pie to the to the quilt the quilt snobs club because no i 
Oh my gosh, you're so funny. You give him his wedding band back. However, his check still goes into your account and he still cooks. You're so funny. <coughs> okay, I'm going to put some stuff in here. Okay, I have a red velvet cake recipe. These are from some like real vintage old stuff. This is a football party cake. Ooh, look at that. Red velvet cake. Okay, let's put those in here. Let's put this one. It says El Melon. Spanish little card there. And I'll add some pockets for somebody to put in their journal wherever they want. Let's see. I have all kinds of ridiculousness. I have some white tickets too. Let's see where we can we put our white tickets. So here's a butterfly clip. Let's see. Have pockets and pockets and pockets and pockets. Here, I'm going to put this one in there too. This is like a, this, is, this one came from here. It's like a little pineapple book, a pineapple bookmark. Some beads. Okay. And you got to have some of this. You guys, I'm all about this patterning and weird. I got to have it. It's got to have the patterning and weird. It's going to have the eyeballs in it soon, as soon as they dry. Maybe I'll take that one off and wait for the eyeball one. Maybe I'll put it, let's see. You guys, the more random, the better as far as I'm concerned. All right, let's see if one of the eyeball ones is, is dry yet. Okay, how did I do this one? I did this one going this direction. Okay, so hopefully. Let's see. Feels dry. Let me add, let me add a ticket, a tag behind it, just so the paper clip doesn't, because it's some of these book pages. You guys, I made this one out of my favorite <coughs> things. <coughs> and some of them are old guys <coughs> 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 My I'm taking all those sinus medicines, but post nasal drip has its way with me. the eyeball on. Let's see how far it's going to stick out of the book. I should have probably put her in more. If I can go back and find my triple thick, I will put her on the eyeball. Oh, Sonia. You know what? <clears throat> I was in a very difficult relationship. My first marriage was very difficult. I have a really lovely partner now. <clears throat> I don't know if I'll ever get married, not because I don't love him, but we had a commitment ceremony for our kids because they were, didn't I tell you guys about how my kids gave me an intervention? My middle daughter and my <clears throat> and my littlest one 
did an intervention on me one day, sat me down and said, he's really good. You know, like, don't mess it up. And you guys, we've been together a long time. He would love it if we would get married. I just have my own issues around marriage and it has nothing to do with him. Okay, please hear me. It's my issue, my, my issue, not him. Um, so, you know, we had a, like a commitment ceremony, you know, uh, just uh, with our kids. It was beautiful. It was just with our kids. But I don't know if I'll ever legally get married. I should preface it differently. My marriage to my first husband wasn't difficult. The divorce was difficult. You guys, he strung me out for like five years or it was ridiculous. <clears throat> oh no, you had one of those husbands too? Well, my ex husband wasn't like quite like that, but I don't I won't bore you with the details, but it was definitely, um, <clears throat> it's definitely put me on warning to ever get married again. We were actually fine and we were actually good as friends until he, until he got involved, until he had got a girlfriend. And when he got a girlfriend, it went all the hell in a handbag. And <clears throat> you guys, we hadn't been together for years and she's incredibly jealous. So, you know, it is what it is. I just had to let it go. Oh, look, here's a cool painting paper and a picture of Stonehenge because everybody needs painting paper and a picture of Stonehenge. Um, <clears throat> but my, my current partner, he's, he's awesome. Because we've been together a long time. We have had, we are a blended family. So we have done everything possible, as you can imagine, or had every. We've had all kinds of stuff with our kids because our kids range in age from <clears throat> 29. We have two 29 year olds. We have a 24 year old, or maybe he'll be 25 this year. And then we have a 22, 23 year old, and then a 15 year old. How old are your two youngest ones? You guys, I kind of like that big blue eyeball. Let me go back to this. Thirty, twenty-nine, twenty-one, thirteen, and eleven. You still have the third. Oh, girl, and one in heaven. Oh, I'm so sorry. Hi, Lolly. I'm sorry, girl. Um, we have twenty-nine. I told you twenty-nine, twenty, two twenty-nine-year-olds, twenty-five-year-old, twenty. He's either twenty-four, twenty-five. I don't know. I can't remember at this point. And then the fifteen-year-old. The 15 year old, I have to tell you, is the joy of our lives. She is the very sweetest child. And she is hilarious. <clears throat> and she she's just lovely. She, I would say, she is like the one that, I mean, even though she's not our child together, she is our child together. Does that make sense? Like, we didn't, she, yeah, she's she's the very sweetest, and she is the easiest of all of my kids. <clears throat> okay, let's see what I've got so far, besides this big mess on my desk. And let's see. Okay, I don't know if I can push my computer back any further. Okay, good. Okay, so I'm thinking of painting, doing a painting on the front. I have to think of what it is. I have one of my crazy, if you guys ever watched a million years ago, my 
They're like kind of like bookmarks, but it's like a journaling charm hanging in and out of the hanging in and out of the journal. You can move it anywhere you want. <clears throat> and then I have some an ATC and a handmade tag that I did some sort of thing on. And I love this crocodile pen. To, I will put some stuff in there. I'll find my die cuts and put some stuff in there. And then some tags. And a tag. And then I put, there's a couple of little things in that little envelope. The elephant clip. And... Maybe I'll make a bunch of blank journaling cards. This is just some junk and some ephemera. And this is one of those clips I made it eons ago. It does have a triple thick on it. If I can find my triple thick, I'll go back and do the other ones. This one's like a fruit from a magazine. I need to put some papers in this belly band. Okay, I know I have some envelopes. You guys get to talk. You get me talking to myself. You get you get it all going on here. You get it going on. Let's see. See, let's put in there. <laughs> well, it's got my junk in it. Thanks, APG. Lolly, I haven't done the wallpaper book ones yet. I'm, I will do them. I have not. I haven't done the wallpaper book ones, and I haven't done the invoices from the last sale unless I could stick it in the package that you currently had going out. So, like, some people got, like, an invoice for four bucks because I could just stick it in whatever they had, but I will. No, it's my to-do list. I haven't done wallpaper books. I haven't done wallpaper books, and I haven't done whatever we had the other night. I did whatever th few nights ago, whenever I did my impromptu, whatever ridiculous one, I haven't done it, but I will. <clears throat> and I'm going to do a sale on Friday, Friday and Saturday. So what I may do is if I haven't, if I can't get it shipped out to you this week, your wallpaper book, I may be able to get them shipped out tomorrow. I weighed them all. I did all the postage guys, this, this uh whatever you want to call this that i have this post nasal drip ridiculousness it's kicked my butt it's like i have um <clears throat> yesterday i was in bed by like some crazy early afternoon if you guys can ever get one of these dyes get one it's from i don't know what it is it's a sizzix dye but it makes these little paper bags of course you can cut them on your own and i have done it on my own without the ridgy bits but i love this dye saying that I packed I don't know where it is so yeah I just want to put some stuff in this belly band <clears throat> no I have not I am not up on all my I should have gotten everything out but I didn't girls <sighs> guys I'm just kind of having to do it in stages because it's just that I get myself in complete and utter overwhelm Oh, I'll put one of these. Look, these are these are humpback whales from here. Oh, maybe I'll put that here too. Let's see. Maybe this is what I'll do. This will be better. This will be more better. More, more, more better. More better. I will, though. I promise I'll get it all out soon. It's just, I thought I was going to finish. You guys, this is what happens. I get like myself in, I finally get to the point where I'm like really going through everything. And then like, look at this. I get this like ridiculous, whatever you want to call it. It's ridiculous cough that's kicking my ass. <clears throat> no, girl, you haven't missed it. Shauna, I have so many wallpaper books. I tried to figure out how to take them for myself, but I can't. I mean, maybe I'll take one or two, but I can't. It's just, <clears throat> you guys, when I was teaching my classes here, which I stopped over COVID,
when people come from far away, they don't come with supplies. So you have to supply them with everything. So <clears throat> that's why I have packs of papers and packs of whatever, because they have, they don't have any, they don't, I guess, unless they go to like the craft store, which none of them do really. And our craft store here is crappy. Unless you go to a craft store, you don't come, you don't, you don't come here with anything, right? So I must have a brat around here. Um, so I have to supply. So they would come, say they were going to come for a week, a week's worth of, that's like seven days a week of a, of a, of a thing. You would have to supply a lot. So I would have all kinds of wallpaper books, paper packs, book covers. I mean, I have, I've gotten, I, I have let go some of it, but since COVID, we haven't had any, they haven't come back. And they may not because the groups I was working with had, were um, people that health had compromised immune situations. So the chances of them like coming back, maybe not, you know, not, not for a while, not till we know for sure it would, um, not until we know for sure, like what, what's going to go on, right? COVID wise, it's hard for people that if you're a cancer survivor to come and want to put yourself into a situation where, you know, you just don't want to do that. Well, here's one I made. Let me see if I can find some fibers for it. So I have all kinds of stuff. So it's not like I was just hoarding this stuff just to have it. I have like all sorts of like, I can't even tell you guys. I have probably the coolest, I think it's cool at least, coolest paper to make amazing paper packs with and stuff like that. But I don't have, I mean, when people were coming and taking classes, then I would just lay it all out. They would pick what they wanted, you know, make what they wanted and then be done with it, right? Like this. So that's why I have all this stuff. It's not because I'm just hoarding it for myself. Although I guess I could say I'm hoarding it for myself, pack ratting it for myself, but it's also like, it's hard, not so easy to get things here. So like if I would find it or when I would travel, when I was traveling a lot, you know, I went to China a few years ago. I got tons of Chinese magazines. I went to Bali. I bought all this Balinese fabric. I, you know, that type, that type of thing, just stuff that you can't get here. So if I was on the mainland, I probably wouldn't have half the stuff because I could probably just you know, go to an antique store or an estate sale or something and find it. But it doesn't quite work out like that here. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Okay, there's this and this. Put that together. I know, even if I do, I won't be here. That's right. No, it's just, you know what, what it is, is so you live, put yourself, so if you're a crafter, like we are, and you enjoy like eclectic, cool, fun things, I'm definitely going to look for my triple thick because I think they'll come out better that way. If you like cool, eclectic things, you're going to be like, you're going to want to have, you're going to want to have things like that at your fingertips, it doesn't always work out here. It just doesn't. It just, it, for what, it can't. <coughs> because it just can't. Even if you want it to, it can't. It's just, we just don't have it. Val might have more things on her island than I have on mine. Because my island's more like an afterthought island. Do you guys know what I mean? Like, maybe I need a thinner one. But I love this pop tart little face. Um, you know, my island is like, there's only one lane in and one lane out. Okay, that's it. One lane in, one lane out. There is, um, 
The speed limit's like 35 to 45, period. Um, I don't know. It's got the most beautiful beaches in the world, but, you know, the shopping is terrible here. Like, you definitely don't, loved this tag, you definitely don't, like, you don't, you don't come to this island to shop, okay? You go to Val's Island to shop. Like, my kids, we used to fly over to Oahu and go to Al Moana to buy school clothes, because we have a Sears, which has now gone out of business, a Macy's, and that is it. You know, we don't have all those things. You like everything? It's all collectible. Well, so like when I traveled to Bali, I got some, and I did get some Balinese ephemera. I don't know where that is. I, I, I loved it. It was so cool. I got that. You guys know for a while I was going to South America a couple times a year. I've got all kinds of stuff from South America. Although they don't have the same kind of stuff that we have. Like they don't have, at least in Colombia, they, they're... Um, they're very eco, they're very eco, um, aware. They're very eco aware because, you know, they don't have, they, they recycle everything. So they're very eco aware. I did get some things from there. I don't know. You guys have traveled to all kinds of places and I've always collected weird things to put in my own personal artwork. So I have always collected my own weird stuff to put in my artwork because like, why not? Here, I'll stick it in here. Maybe I'll stick it like that so that the thingies go out. Oh, no dollar stores here. They do. You, they have Daiso on on Oahu, right? I haven't been though, right? You have Daiso on Oahu, um, Val. We don't have anything like that here. No Daiso. No, none of that. <clears throat> Can I tell you one of my YouTube subscribers that I love more than anything? They were doing the Dollar Tree challenge and she sent me all the stuff to do. Because I wrote, I watched her do it and I made a comment on her things. I said, I love it. You did fabulous. I said, no Dollar Tree here. She sent me the Dollar Tree, the stuff to do the Dollar Tree challenge. Remember when everybody was making a junk journal from the Dollar Tree? <clears throat> I'm going to definitely look for my triple thick because I'll work on those paper clips. They have to, but they'll have to like, they'll have to sit overnight, the eyeballs, because they won't. Yeah. Just need to add some papers and I'll add a pack separate to it all. So whoever gets it, you're definitely getting my bits and pieces for sure. My, my taste. And I got to put the turkey butt in there. I don't know where the turkey butt's going to go. I love this turkey butt. It's so silly. Turkey butt has got to have. Ooh, the blue eyeball I like too. Now I need a green one, I think. I need to look through my eyeballs. I gotta find my eyeballs, girls. Oh, see, and like this is a pocket. I didn't put it down because I didn't know if they wanted it or not, but it's like one I blue I painted. Let me see, find an eyeball. Let me find a place to put it. Or I can just clip it somewhere. Or I can clip it on the back of that. What's on the back of this? Oh, that's this is where I live. This is my island. This is the EL Valley. This is right down the street from me. It's like, uh, so I told you guys, this one was from me. This is like got my bits and pieces, stuff I love. My painting papers. Not, this is not a journal for somebody that wants something foo-foo. This is a journal for somebody that wants to use it like a glue book, enjoy it, collect the weird random. Wait, where am I going to put the turkey butt? The turkey butt has to go somewhere good. The turkey butt can go back here, I guess. Let's see. But I need to put the turkey butt needs to have something. She needs to hold something. <clears throat> oh, I know what I was going to make. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay. We're still working on her. And she's not even that fat. She's got lots of room to grow. But no, I found these. Okay. Did you guys, I don't know if I ever did this with you. 
but I did them for one of my kids journals and she loved them. And then I found two that I had left over or some, I might've had many left over. You guys know me and my crap. I have like eclectic random. Okay. There's some stamps. Some bling. Okay. This is what I want. I want this, these little, and I'll definitely need to put some, I thought I put more than one in there. No, no, these aren't the right ones. They're right here. Duh. There's some like random bits, you guys. If you can get into the random, it is me. Oh, here's a clip. We can use that one in there. There's a piece of elastic. Well, oh, here's one. I like that one too. Okay. Okay, so I made these for my one of my kids' journals. And Where's the other one? I thought I found two of them. One, this one says gravity. Oh no. What did I do with it? There's some time cards. I thought I had more than one. This one says gravity. This will have to be good. So I made paper clip embellishments out of these. These are, and they take a while to make. So it's just like a piece of cardboard with book pages. And then, like, I, I found a word. I don't know if you can see it very well. This is gravity. No comparison to the Japanese ones. <clears throat> I always wanted to go to Daiso over there. But, you know, Val, you know how it is. It's like your life, one thing leads to another, leads to another, leads to another, and you never get there. So I'll put one of these in there. It definitely needs triple thick on it too. Let me see if I can enough to find a piece of something to go in the back of this. Maybe a piece of fabric. Because I made her all kinds of paper clip embellishments. I was like a fool back then. I was a paper clipping fool. I must have some sort of fabric right around here. So, so Friday, I'm going to definitely do my sale and maybe Saturday. And then I think I have to call it the end. Makes me sad because I have like so many cool things that I don't, I'm just going to have to like, I don't know. I don't have any, you guys, nobody crafts here like I do. Nobody, nobody creates with trash. No, nobody I know here creates with trash or recyclable or collectible from other countries or whatever. Nobody does that that I know here. So I can't even leave my stuff to somebody, you know, it's like, whatever. I have to get to the point where I'm okay with whatever happens to it. And I haven't quite gotten there yet. Almost. Oh, I'm going to put that one in there. It's a painted one. Almost, but not quite. I haven't quite gotten there, but I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying to be less um, attached. You know, I guess I wouldn't be so attached if I, if I didn't think that somebody else could use it or appreciate it. And I may take Laura's advice and just do some random, some random grab bag kind of thing. Um, <coughs> I don't know. I haven't quite, I haven't gotten there yet, but I'm working on it. I am so working on it. I am working on it. So I am definitely working on it. You guys collected all my crazy books that I love that, 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 um, par brace. I, I have a thing for that. I don't know what it is. I mean, I know we all have our own weird things, but I definitely have a thing for that har brace book. It's crazy, but I do. I have it for that har brace book. <clears throat> so those of you that got that, that's awesome because you're going to, that is, that is super fun. That I have to say is probably one of my funnest, the, one of the most fun things that I, it's like my don't have to think about it. It doesn't matter. It's only for me book. I think you just need to random box it all. Girl, I could random box it. I will. I will. I will. I'll get to that point. I just haven't quite yet. Cause you know what, Jamie, the reason I haven't gotten totally to that point yet is because I still don't know I still have to, I don't know where all my stuff is. 
you listed random boxes in your shop and it was the fastest sold in your Etsy. Okay, selfishly, you guys, selfishly, I want to I wanna know, like, like, for instance, I still haven't found my box of Balinese fabric. I think I've gone through every box here. I haven't found my box of Balinese fabric. You guys, there is probably 40 yards of Balinese fabric. I don't know what I did. I mean, I know it's here. <coughs> I made my daughter something out of one of them. One of one of my kids, she needed. She moved into an apartment and it didn't have a. It was like a weird apartment and it didn't have a bathroom door, so I made her a curtain like out of this Balinese fabric. And so I know, it, and I've I found one piece of it, but I have like twenty pieces of it. Each are like two yards each, so I don't know what I did with it can't find it. It has to be here. I haven't gone anywhere. So I haven't found that. Um, I'm also missing this box of stuff. And I know it's here. I just haven't found it. Maybe it's, I don't know. I thought I've gone through everything, but maybe I haven't. It's got like, because I used to do this whole stamp embellishment class with the people that would come here. You know, that because some people don't want to work in big piece, big art. They just want little bits. So I would make these cool little stamp collages. So I have stamps from all over the world. I can't find that box. And it's a big box. Um, I don't know, you guys. Just random stuff. Whatever, whatever classes I was teaching, random stuff like that. You know? Random. Random. So that's why I have all the stuff. I have like more stuff than one person could ever use for themselves because it wasn't meant for me. We do have a, a, an attic. I haven't gone up there. I don't think it's up there, but it could be, Jamie. You know, it's just I got to look. It's like stupid. Because I'm more concerned with my craft supplies than I am with my own stuff, isn't it? My own... It's like silly. So I'll put this gravity one in there. This gravity. I'll put that one in there. I should put some sort of paper on this one. I don't know. So we have gravity. We have this one I'm going to put in there. I guess I could make a stamp one out of these. Don't know. Anyway, that's just where I'm at. So you guys see, so it's it's a bigger, it's bigger than just like, okay, um, just get rid of your stuff. It's like, it's like I would I want to find those stamps. Okay, I did lots of classes with them. They've got some really cool tissue paper and that I got from all over the world inside of it, and just some kind of cool stuff. I want that, right? Also, some sewing projects like stuff that I haven't, that I started, that I know I didn't finish. Like that too. He's not quite big enough. Maybe I can do him on two. Let's see. So that, oh, and my metal smithing projects. Oh my gosh, you guys, please. So the other day I had made this box of stuff to give to this friend of mine who teaches children. She teaches children's art. And so I made this box of stuff to give her. And something told me, you need to look in the bottom of this box. And I was like, what in the heck? I made it for her. Why would I want to look in the bottom of this box, right? So I just did it anyway. Guys, I found like all of this. I found a baggie of, and meanwhile, I had put like, I don't know, like stamps for like stamps that are more like juvenile stamps, like cat stamps and the stamp and some other, whatever I had for my classes that I was teaching, right? I put it in there. And um, and then I, something, I look in the bottom and I find this huge bag of uh, silver. And it's silver that I've made metalsmith projects out of, so it's not clean silver. So the average person would just think it was like some black throwaway metal, but it was a lot of silver. So I put, I put that in my, you know, I mean, so now I'm, now I'm trying to be a little bit more conscious of like, instead of just saying, throw it all in, 
but I will take it, take your, take your advice and do random boxes. What did your random boxes have in it, Malia? Charlie, get out of there. What did your random, what did your random boxes have in it? And I've got all kinds of ephemera and paper and I don't know, you guys, all kinds of stuff. And more paper, fabric, paint, oh my gosh, maps. I'm going to put something behind him. I just don't know it. And you feel like every time you moved, you lost stuff. Girl. Yes, my yes, your future husband just filled up my drink because <laughs> he heard me coughing. <laughs> Jamie says, is, that, is my future husband filling up your drink? I said, yes. Right. And he can cook too. Not great, but he can cook. He cooks great pizza. Now, he makes great homemade pizza, makes great bacon and eggs, makes fabulous steaks. He can make a mean salad. Guys, poor man was vegetarian for years and then he met me. Isn't that ridiculous? Being vegetarian and then now he's like, he eats everything now. His vegetarian, his vegetarian ways are gone. The dog is like some, she is like in the bathroom back here. I don't even know what she's doing. I don't know what she's looking for. Can you feed her? Does she need her? He's really nice, guys. He's awesome. He's always nice to me. Nice is not his issue. He doesn't have any issues. I'm the only one that has issues, really, honestly. Okay, I want to make, I'm going to put something behind him. I'm not crazy about this ticket, and I just don't. How many of you guys are like to that point where you're like, I want to put something behind something and I don't know what it is. Let's see how. Cool. So I'm going to put this on the top of this little tag that I made and I'm going to stick it in the journal because this journal is going to have like the most random stuff in it, but whoever gets it, You'll know it's me, and you'll, you'll know it's all about me, and you'll appreciate it. You'll be like, oh, yeah, that's just Shelly's weirdness. We, we, got, we got you, Shell. We got you with your weirdness. No, he's awesome. And he took, you know what? He doesn't ever criticize me in any way, shape, or form. Like, there's no criticism from him. He is always 100% supportive. Um, we very rarely have any sort of issues. I think... The only issues that we ever really have generally are around our kids. And it's really not about him. It's usually about me. It's about me like stressing out over like one of the kids needs something or, or like, for instance, one of his sons was like forever was like on a, he was like on a trip. He was like a, um, we called him a phobo, like a fake hobo. He was like going across the country in a freight train. I was so worried about him. And, you know, it's like nothing we could have said. He was yeah, he was train hopping. There was nothing we could have said that it would have made it any different. But for me, it was like stressing me out. Like that, that those are those are generally our issues, that kind of thing. All right, I'm going to put a time card in there. I, I've got a bunch of ephemera and stuff to go in here. I'll put some painty papers. Let me find some better ones than that. I'll put some of my weird eclectic tags. I'll just find a bag and put a bunch of bag stuff in it. Well, we're getting there. It's getting fuller. And I'm going <clears> to, <throat> maybe I need to move this tag. Let's see. Let's move it over. I'm not letting it dry. See, that's my problem. I'm a little impatient. I'm going to need to let this dry. I can't even put it on there until it dries. The secret is not to not get married. You're probably right. Yeah, we're crafting, Trish. I'm trying to finish this journal for the Disabled Artist Foundation auction in December, because you know what, girls? Okay, so I have to, I, I'm not gonna have time to do anything. So it's gotta be, it's gotta be now or never. So I'm gonna put this in, but I'll wait till that. So I'm just 
trying to finish this journal that I, Trish, this is probably, I can't even tell you when I started this journal or I made this journal. I could have made this journal like five years ago, maybe. I know that I've taken it to my class a couple of times when I've taught, when they, when they, when I was teaching those classes here, <clears throat> just to show people like what a junk journal is so that people aren't scared to, um, cut up, you know, because if you go to think about it, if you've never taken a class like this and you go <clears throat> and then you see all this, all these books and pages. Yeah, this is a real junk journal. Definitely junk, junky junk journal. It is a good book. I like it. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking I'm still contemplating whether I paint something on the front. I don't know what I paint, though. Maybe I paint the Hawaiian Islands. Maybe I paint pineapple, maybe I paint, I don't know. You know what I mean? Do you look at a hand painting on there? Yeah, so I'm going to, I'm still going to make some, I'm working on making some paper clips. I was making eye, eyeball paper clips, Trish. You came in for the eyeball paper clip moment. That's what you came in for. I'm going to do something with this tag. <clears throat> I just opened a bag of random stuff I have and this is what it is. <clears throat> like my random bag of goodies. I'll put gravity on there. Gravity needs to, to dry. We are crafting. We are trying to craft so that girls have overwhelmed myself. I'm not going to lie. I have overwhelmed myself. <clears throat> Overwhelm myself. I have, I also know though, that if I don't, if I don't put together some stuff for this, it just won't happen. Not because I don't want it to happen, but because I'm just in my own overwhelm. So, all right, I have some French. These are going to go on there. Some French cards. These are those playing cards that are Hawaii. This is like a napkin tag I made, a napkin tag holder. Some little bits and pieces. These are all going to go. Maybe I'll just put all in like a pack and then whoever gets it can figure out where it goes. Some of my crazy envelopes. Put that. This will go together. <clears throat> oh my gosh. You guys, if you guys have a tag cutter, if you have any sort of a any sort of a die cut machine that cuts tags, cut it out of your plastic packaging. Like these make the best. Like I'm gonna put, I'll put a couple pieces of washi tape on it. They're like really cool. Yes, I put some eyeballs in there and a turkey butt and the lips with a B. <clears throat> I don't have any legs. I should find, I should go look and see if I can find you know, I have some cutouts somewhere. But you know what's cool about adding all this stuff to your to your collection of stuff? I mean, I was doing mine with the in mind teaching, right? So normally I wouldn't collect 10 of the same book. I mean, that just is not me. But if you're teaching, a lot of times people want to make the exact same book you're making or they want to use the exact same supplies you're using. And so adding all those different books or having all those different books made it really possible to, um, to do that, right? Cut, cut these little clear tags from your packaging and wrap your washi or, or, you know, you can collage on them and they look really cool too. Do the, your paper napkin collage. That, that always comes out really good. But I wouldn't normally have like 10 of the same book. I'm just, but teaching that class, I did. And, and it made me appreciate, you know, it really, I also got to know the materials really well because, you know, if you're looking for that one, that same book or whatever over and over again, Sometimes it's easy to find and sometimes it isn't. And then you kind of find your new ones or, 
the really sad thing is my favorite little used bookstore that I used to go to all the time that I would donate a ton of my books back to you guys is closed for COVID. They are not reopening because all of their volunteers are over 65 and they really feel like they don't want to put anyone at harm's way, which I respect and appreciate, but I'm a little sad, you know, because I have a big, huge box of books outside that I'm never going to use. I mean, I did, some of you guys collected some of my treasures the other day and I may add a few more to the, to the mix on Friday and Saturday, but you know, it's just, they're not open, so I can't even take them back. So on your list of things, top 10 things you would like to add to your stash, what is it? Like, I was thinking about it for myself. Like, I would like, I want a flat file. I want one of those, um, you know, when you go into an architect's, Hey, Carla, when you go into an architect's office and they have those flat files where they put all the drawings, I want that. How many of you guys want that? Yep, used bookstore is, a, yeah, I know, it's on a Weber porch pickup. No, they're not even open, Tammy. They're not even open. It's a nonprofit and they're not even open. They, I called, you want a desk, Carla? Ooh, good for you. I don't even have, I don't even know what I'm going to have. Your store is still there. The store is still here and they have like four or five um, stores, but they're not open because it's a total volunteer. Um, it's a total volunteer organization and they're not, um, they don't want to put anybody in harm's way, which I appreciate. But at the same time, I can't take all my, can't take all my treasures back that I would like, you know, let me see if I have any more tape here. I thought I had, you guys, I think I had honestly given all of my, done all my tape to the last, um, the last Disabled Artist Foundation sale. You know, when I did one with CARE and I did it with them, I gave them a ton of my tape. And even after giving them a ton of my tape, I still found tape. How does that work? Like even after giving a donating a bunch, you still find it. Hi, Sandra Crafty Mom. How are you? Do you have an old record cabinet that you store some of your paper in? Ooh, I'd like that too. Yeah, I don't I don't have a desk yet in my space. I know I don't have a desk. Um, but I have all these tables that belong to my hottie's grandma. So I'm assuming I can use one of them as my, well, Blanked is great grandma, I think. Um, so I have that. I definitely want a new chair. I've got to get a, you guys, how many of you need like an ergonomically correct chair? I certainly need one. I have the worst chairs. I don't know what it is. I used to have one when I live streamed that I loved so much, but it finally fell apart. It was just this old wicker chair that had a really soft, really soft, but nice cushions. And it finally fell apart. Books are like all over the place here. It's overstock. Well, that's good for the, that's good for us bibliophiles then. That is really good for us bibliophiles. I, the book thing, I just want him to, I just don't want him to end in a landfill. So I told my hottie that he needed to um, find the guy that was the head of all the volunteers. And because um, he used to volunteer there and, and tell me of books to donate. You, you have a good chair. I need one, man. I really need one. I'm that I would love some suggestions. We had two bookstores here and they left since COVID and like three more had popped up. Wow. Well, our, even our thrift stores aren't open. Like one of our main thrift stores closed right, right when COVID hit and it was a good one. It was really good. Um, they closed and I don't know about the other ones. I don't know what's going to reopen or, or if anything. 
it's a little bit sad here because you, you definitely it's the trickle down effect here you know it's like it's the trickle down effect the finance department and i got new chairs last year my old chair was 20 years old oh girl lucky you i am yeah i want a good desk chair i want one that i can craft in all day and not not make my legs hurt or my feet hurt or whatever you have a recycling place that takes books good for you well we have that but they're not open now so guys this is a great way to send happy mail you could do it on a playing card too just i happen to have one of these clear tags in my bag of random I was thinking about like, what would I like? I'm going to definitely get myself some good lights. That's what I'm going to get. Get one where the arms lift up. Okay. That's a good suggestion. Um, I'm definitely going to get good lights. I'm going to buy myself a new, really good camera. And that works well with my live streaming. And what else do I want? Well, I'd like to be organized. That's on my crafty wish list. To get there and to organize whatever I have left, which may not be a lot, but it may be a little. A lot or a little, I'll have something left. Um, let me get there and organize my stuff. I, I'm not taking that much stuff with me. I, I have have packed some, but not, probably not a lot. Um, I did take all my metal smithing tools, get natural white light bulbs. Okay. Labels, use labels. Definitely. Natural white light bulbs. Okay. I can totally do that. I want to get some good lights though. I mean, it's been so long since I've had any real, and I want to get myself a new I'm gonna think I'm gonna get myself a desktop setup Ikea Alex line is your goal for organizing I don't know if I've seen it is there an Ikea near you is there one near you Malia Okay, so I only did that so they'd see it was a tag when you stick it in this book because one may not notice it. So it's in the front, it's in the front, it's in the front, front, front. Okay, let me see what other embellishment. I'm going to make a pack of this stuff. Let me see. I got this. Got all kinds of random stuff around here. I'm going to put it in this baggie for the minute. Maybe maybe I'll see if I can find one of my fabric bags. Oh, my gosh. Hopefully, I haven't gotten rid of them all. You guys? Yep. Made some foolish choices earlier in, in my disposal of things. It's in Charlotte. Oh, girl, that's too far. That's too far to drive. How, Charlotte's like four hours from me. So, we drive four hours to go to. We'd have to go spend the night somewhere. Um, drive four hours to go to Ikea and then drive back. You have to spend. My sister has a house in Charlotte, but she rented it out. She's got an amazing house. Amazing house on the water. I mean, stellar, gorgeous, amazing, amazing house. No, I'm not buying any new tools. I'm not. I'm taking. I am going to pack my old Sizzix. I'm taking it with me. Um, my metal smithing tools. No, I'm taking them all. They're all rusted. I need to repair them all. And, fix them all but they're still all good make a girls weekend shopping at ikea okay that sounds like a deal i could do that i think i could do that so i'm um, you know i am taking a few things i honestly i have one box of things one box uno one box one box of things i have 
Um, I'm going to put some of this stuff back in there. Well, maybe I'll make some some things with bells. Um, I'm... I'm going to... Um, I have like a box of random, it's like, like some journals I've been working on for a long time I'm taking with me. Um, have you auctioned me off yet? No, he asked me if I had my auction to off yet. No, I haven't auctioned him off. You have to pick up our girl. What time, what time are you? About half an hour. Half an hour? Okay. No, I haven't auctioned you off yet. <laughs> I think, Jamie, I think I've already sent it to myself. I think I mailed it to myself a while back because that was like, I had all these. Okay, so I have all of these book covers, you guys, that I, because I'm not teaching class now, you know, like it's where I've taken the guts out of the book. Because this is, this is what I found. And maybe some of you guys that teach pipe in. Um, people have a real fear and a phobia of taking apart books, right? So what I found was the easiest way for me to deal with it was I would just take them apart for them. I just took the books apart myself. And so when they would come to the class, the books were all taken apart. So they wouldn't have, oh, that's cool. So they wouldn't have that phobia or that fear to deal with in taking apart things. So I have all of these book covers and some of them are super cool. You guys, I mean, really cool old ones, just, just neat things. I have, I have a whole tub full of book covers because if you're going to teach, I mean, it would, they would be three week sessions, but there could be each session could hold a hundred people. So you, you, sometimes people stayed the whole three weeks. And so you would have one person, but sometimes different, you know, a hundred different people for a week. So I have, I have a huge um, tub of book covers, which I could show them all to you guys. If anybody wanted any of them, there's some of them are so cool. Um, so I have that. And then I told you I have all those paper packs that I've made because that's the other thing. So if you're trying to teach somebody and they've never, ever, ever done anything like this and they look at you and they have all the phobias that we all had initially when we all started, like my parents told me never to cut up a book and don't do this and don't do that. Right. So I had paper packs. I'd make paper packs for them so that they just already had the papers to start with. Not that they had to use those papers, but it was easier just saying, okay, here's your book cover and your paper pack for the very first round. So then that way they were like all golden with it, right? They were, instead of being like all freaked out about it, they were like, oh, okay, it's my supplies. So then it didn't, because I can tell you my first, my first few classes that I taught, like with this cancer survivors group, they would totally panic. Like, like they would contemplate and then feel bad about cutting it up. So if they came and it was already cut up, they didn't really have anything to ma matter, you know? So I have that. That's why I have all these paper packs and stuff. I'm not sitting around making paper. Not that I don't love you guys. I'm not sitting around making paper packs for you guys. <laughs> I have them already. I have them already. It's So this is a, I don't know, my daughter, this came from like a shop in China. So it's like a really cool one. Hottie Priceless, are we, are Priceless, are we, you use a three metal craftsman tool chest and it sits in, in your desk. Oh, wow. Trish, take a picture of it and send, send them, um, send it to, put it posted in Crafting Mamas. What did you, Carla said her jewelry tools are rusty. I had them in one of those fabric craft tool things. You can get it at Michael's or Joanne's. How do you get the rest off jewelry tools? You have to sand it. You have to sand it, Carla. Get a lightweight sandpaper. You can pro you can put them in chemicals, but you just gotta sand it. If you got lightweight sandpaper, you can do it. And if they're totally rusted, like where the hinges don't work, honestly, you can soak them in a, in Coca Cola. 
Does that, how does that sound to you? Soaking them in Coca-Cola. Thank you to whoever sent these to me. Obviously, I haven't used them, but I'm going to use them now. So there you go. Um, you can soak them in Coca-Cola. Then you have to rinse them really well. You know, some of the pliers that I have, I have like German made pliers and they like eons ago cost me, you know, $25 a pair 20 years ago. I can't imagine what they cost now. I need a cup of water to clean my paintbrush. It's got glue on it. I will get, I will, I'll ask when he comes back. You guys, one thing about him, because he's a painter, he can restore, and I mean, not that it's a good thing, it's a good habit to have, but he can restore any of my, any of my paintbrushes that I have let, like, whatever, he can restore any of them. He used to work at this high-end home um, remodeling company, and he was their finished carpenter or their finished painter. And people, he he would say these. And some of these paintbrushes are like super expensive, and he would he would get them, and he would you know people would throw them away because they didn't know what to, what to do with them. But he would take them, and he would um, clean them. And so he has a whole box. He probably shipped them to himself. You guys, some of the paintbrushes were like twenty five and thirty dollars a paintbrush. He probably shipped them all to himself. Okay, I'm going to put some bell ones in here, too. So, yes, I'll ask him to get me some. He'll he'll bring me something to wash my paintbrush in a minute. I'm sure he will. I am sure he will. Maybe I'll hang some bells off of some of it. I don't have my pliers over here. I could twi twirl the ends so that they don't come off. Maybe I'll put a few bells on there so there'll be some bells ringing on this one. I need to stop drinking Coke. I don't drink Coke. I do not drink Coca-Cola at all. I mean, I, not that I don't love it. I did as a child. I'm kidding, but I don't drink it. No, but it'll take the rust off of anything. You have to let it sit for a while. So I'll tell you a funny story. So we used to go vacation when my kids were little. In my first marriage, we used to go vacation in New Hampshire. They have these islands in New Hampshire. And my ex-husband's best friend grew up, his family's had him there, had a place there since the beginning of whenever it was formed. Anyway, so um, he, we used to go every summer and people live in little cabins there. I mean, there's, you know, it's very rustic. It's really cool. Um, you have to get your groceries delivered by a boat. It's like, there's no stores. It's definitely the ultimate like Zen and getaway and I used to love to go. I'd catch up on all the reading. I'd pile all the books that I ever wanted to read the whole year and save it for the two weeks we would go. Well, one of the, my, his friend's great aunt had a house there or something. And she was like, they had a, a well, you know, pump the pump your water. And um, her, it had rusted shut because it's seasonal because, you know, it snows and the lake freezes over the summer. So, I mean, over the winter. So you can't go there. You can, it's only seasonal. And, um, you know, we're in the middle of this lake. You have to, you can't get anywhere. You have to take a boat to and from everything. And so he asked her, he was like, well, what do you have? Like, we're looking around and she, and he, she says, well, and he, he saw Coca-Cola. He goes, can I have some of that? And she said, yeah. And so he just took a two liter bottle of Coca-Cola and took her, her well parts apart and uh, her hand pump well. And, and then I don't know how long they soaked. They might've soaked overnight. They completely were rust free. That made a huge impression on me. After that, I stopped drinking Coca-Cola. 
Ah, so I'm right there with you. Might it, it might not be the healthiest thing. Drinking the Coca-Cola. Isn't that funny? But it works. So, you know, it works on your tools too. It works on anything that's rusted. You know what I do have, you guys, that I've been contemplating? No, I don't have Lindstrom tools. I have, oh my gosh, German, German company. Oh, I'll tell you in a second. I can't think of it. Tell you what I have. They may not have them anymore. I've had them for so long. You know what, Val, if I go and find, if I go up and mess in my toolkit, I'll tell you what it is. I don't know what they are, but they were expensive. They were expensive. They were like, like my little needle nose pliers were like $25. That's crazy for needle nose pliers. But I've had them for 20 something years, so. They work good. Okay, it's shaping up, you guys. It needs more tags. It needs more bits. I'm going to definitely work on some more paperwork embellishments. Hi, Renee. How are you? You know, I don't drink Coke. I drink probably worse. I drink, like, my favorite drink it's diet grapefruit soda. Like I think you only you can only get it like at Safeway or one of those places. It's like a store brand soda. I love it. Diet grapefruit soda. You guys, I haven't done sugar in a really long time. And the last time, so we went out with some friends at some point during the pandemic, and it was before they had reclosed and opened and closed and done whatever here. And um, I had a margarita and I asked them to make it a skinny Rita, which is like seltzer, lime juice, and um, it's just seltzer and lime juice and then your tequila. And they put some sort of whatever grenadine or whatever simple syrup in you guys, my mouth swelled. So I was like, okay, I'm not doing sugar anymore. So I haven't had sugar in a good long while. I mean, I, I won't say that I haven't had it in something that I didn't know it was in, but I don't. So I use to every single day that I have coffee, I use monk fruit sugar. I don't know if any of you guys know that monk fruit sugar. I like it a lot. It works well for me. Um, I, I can't do stevia. I don't, for whatever reason, I don't like the taste of it. Um, I don't like the taste of stevia and I don't like the taste of some erythritol. I like flavored. I love flavored sparkling water, but I don't, you know, honestly, every day I drink a salt drink. I drink a, um, an electrolyte drink and I love it. My favorite one is this one called Element L-M-N-T and it's amazing. I, I, it's for me, it's, I like it, but it's for your electrolytes and, um, I drink a lot of water. I drink iced tea. I make myself some herbal iced tea every day. I do have one cup of coffee a day. Most days, not every day, but most days. Um, that's really it. You guys, I'm like down to the, an occasional glass of red wine every now and then. And I, my daughter before she, my eldest daughter before she left made me a skinny Rita. I haven't had one since she left though. I haven't had one since she left. I was looking in this bag of random stuff to see if I could find any other things I wanted to put in here. Guys, I have so much stuff. I should be able to find stuff I can put in here. Yeah, I love monk fruit, monk fruit sugar. Oh, I love root beer. I love your diet root beer. I love it. You're a Pepsi girl. You have it all day, every day. I like diet Pepsi. You guys, I can't... I'm not saying you shouldn't do it, and I'm definitely not encouraging anyone to drink diet drinks, but for me personally, 
the whole sugar thing after the after being on a keto diet for a long time and then you know having that reaction it was horrible it was like what the heck was that you know what i mean these are some random cards i have let's put some random in here um it was just it was not the best for me sugar sugar just i'm telling you the whole top of the roof of my mouth like got blisters it was like so ridiculous and i think of all the years that i've and i'm not an anti-sugar person i love sweets i love that's probably bigger weak you know like some people have breads as their weakness sweets are my weakness okay love myself some sweets but for whatever reason sweets don't love me maybe i'll make a an embellished paper clip on this one i'll find one for that because i have the weirdest stuff I have Sudoku cards. I have, I have, I got some weirdness going on here. So, yeah. I say you have to do what works for you. Like, I have a friend. She drinks full sugar sodas all day long. She's about 105 pounds. She smokes like a chimney. She runs marathons. I mean, me, on the other hand, I have a sugar soda and the roof of my mouth goes crazy. How silly is that, right? Is root beer zero sugar, not diet? What do they sweeten it with? I thought that I correct me if I'm wrong. I'm so out of the loop. I thought when they add zero to it, that's just another name for diet. Am I wrong? I could totally be absolutely wrong and that's fine too. I could be absolutely wrong and it could be like, oh no, it's something else and it's special. And I'd be like, oh, I didn't know. I have like that, you guys, when I don't, when I no longer have bags of things, I'll probably feel better. You know, because I have like bags and bags and bags of random stuff. Bags of random stuff, bags of random stuff. Bags of random stuff. Like weird, here I have weird cards here. Whoever gets this is going to definitely be into the into my random because it has got some random going on. I need to make a, some extra clips for these. I just don't know what. I don't like the newer Pepsi products that have real sugar in them. I like the original stuff. Don't change it. I don't like change. You can't drink fake sugar stuff and it, the taste, all the artificial stuff, it literally makes you sick. I get it. I totally get it. Hey, you have to do what works for you. I would tell you prior to me doing this low carb diet that I would never drink. First of all, I didn't really drink soda. But second of all, I would never have ever said, oh, I'll drink a diet soda or whatever. But now being on this low carb diet for as long as I have, I can't stuff with sugar. Like I had a piece of cake. A friend of mine had a going away party and I had a tiny bite of this cake, the roof of my mouth blistered. I was like, okay, I'm done. 
So it's not even that I don't want to have it. It's just my body is just like, um, I don't think so. My body's like, you better think again. My body's like, uh, no, babe, you can't have it. So, I mean, I understand. You have to do what works for you. There is no one size fits all. Not even in a low carb diet, okay? There is no one size fits all. Not even in that. So you gotta work, you know, that's why you gotta do you. Whatever works for you. There is no one size fits all. If there was, we'd all be like, woohoo, one size fits all. Hey, Deb, how are you, girl? Those of you that are just joining us, we're making, I'm finishing, trying to finish, uh -huh. finish a journal that is going to go for the Disabled Artist Foundation sale in December. And they are auctioning off journals, which I think is so awesome because there's so many times I would love to own a journal by somebody, but I can't afford it or whatever. You know, there's always something, right? So they're doing this. Disabled Artist Foundation auction, and um, people are donating journals. And Malia donated a journal. Anybody's welcome to donate one. If it's not too late, you can go over to um, the. I put the website in the. I put the website in the description box so you guys can go if anybody goes oh yeah I, I have like I've made 25 journals and I want to donate one I mean go on over and do it it goes for a good cause the disabled artist foundation provides supplies art supplies um, for those that can't afford it and or have a type of disability there's two ways to um, There's a, if, if, if anybody, if you know of anybody that could use that type of support, um, they send out monthly packages and they're great. The packages are fabulous. Um, they send out monthly packages and I think in December and in July, they get much bigger packages, but all kinds of cool art supplies. And... 100% of the donations go to providing the postage and supplies. There's no one paid um, in the Disabled Artist Foundation group. There's not a paid person. So when you donate, it's either going toward postage or going toward, occasionally somebody will have a, a wish list item that maybe we don't have, you know, and they'll buy that wish list item for the person. It's not all about new things. It's like you could also go uh, and you could also go and contribute in kind. Like you can send them art supplies or things you no longer use, or maybe you were on a tangent of making something and that no longer you don't you no longer do that. And they take um, on all the donations are tax deductible because it is a five hundred one c three and. Um, yeah, so that's what I'm doing. I'm making this journal because if I don't do it now, huh, you guys, they won't get anything. And I'm going to work on a fabric one. I'm making a fabric one as well. But I figured I'd hate take you guys along and making some embellishments for this one. Some paperclip embellishments and... So, you know, it's all fun. So anything you donate to them, it, I mean, it, what's really great about it is, <clears throat> you know, so say you donate a journal and your journal sells for $25 and that 100% of that $25 goes to the Disabled Artist Foundation. Um, 
there's nothing, there's no other fees or things like that. So that's pretty cool, I think. And I think for a lot of us, we all know somebody that could use a pickup. And they have a couple of ways that you can, I mean, it, if you know somebody that might want to try and um, they have an application process and everything, it's completely 100% discreet. So you never know who's part of the, they never divulge who's part of their, you know, who receives benefits or not. But it's cool. So I've certainly sent them all kinds of stuff and done all kinds of things with them. Yes, Jane Peter puts kits together. Jane Peter Artist, yes. Yep, she does. And she makes fabulous kits. Jane, Care, Kim. I don't know if you, if you guys know Kim. She puts together kits. Laura Free, she uh, is a core volunteer. I am. Christy Biddleson is as well. So is Darla Walker. Um, Kim from Vintage Rose Creations. She, Jean, and Care put together lots and lots of kits. Not to say that some of us haven't joined in and done a few mailings or done a few things or done some behind the scenes stuff for them. We all try to do whatever we can, but those are the ones that have that have the the time and the the gumption to. Oh, thanks, Carla. You know, I just know that for myself, art has seen me through a lot of stuff in my life, like a lot. Like I can't imagine my life without art. I mean, you guys pipe in and, and talk about it too. I mean, I can't imagine my life where I couldn't make my artwork and do what I do. And if I hadn't, it really has seen me through like tremendous things in my personal life. When I mentioned to you guys, I was going through like that horrible, terrible divorce. It was arting that got me through it. I'm telling you, it was like, it was my art that saw me through my daughter's illnesses. Art has seen me through um, the, the loss of, of family members. Art has seen me through. So I can't imagine my life without it. I also can't imagine not being in a place to be able to afford to do my art. So when I got the opportunity to um, give back, I do, wherever I can, right? So, yeah, I think it's a great way to, like, you know, to support, support other people that maybe just couldn't, I mean, you know, you don't think about it, but I certainly have spent my share of of money on art supplies as i'm sure all of you have right so we've all done our we've done our retail therapy so I, i'm all i'm all for anything that supports the arts anyway but it makes it easier when um When it's something that you can really believe in and, and and do, I enjoy it. And I try to go every month to their auction and buy something, even if I can't, like I don't really need anything, but I try to support them. So it's not too late. You can send... A journal. I sent some of my prized possessions, you guys. I have a beautiful, beautiful Shannon Green one-of-a-kind folio that she made. It was like one of the only ones she did with like resin and paint. And I love it, but I gave it to them. I donated it because I think somebody would really love it, collect it. She signed it. It's just like a Midori-style notebook, but it's one that she painted. It was like I think I already packed it in their box or I'd show it to you. It was um, one she painted and I love it. But you know what? Like, I can raise some funds for the disabled artist I'm game. Um, 
I donated some journals that I've bought from people that I was like, I love this journal, but I know that there are many other people that would love it too. So, and you, you know, whatever it is you have, you, you know, not everybody makes. You guys, I can't imagine my life without art. Can you guys imagine your life without art? I mean, granted, I, I make trash art, but I still can't imagine my life without it. You know? I'm going to see if this works. I'm going to see if this works. Okay, i got to cut it smaller. It's, it's your happy space. I agree with you. Your happy release. I totally agree with you. Guys, I'm right there with you with that. It's totally the same thing for me. I mean, I know, like, my art is not aesthetically, like, the same for, you know, mine's, like, out there, but I love it. And I'm grateful for it. Because if I didn't have it in my life, I can't even imagine. You guys know how many times I've, like, arted through pain, like physical pain, like, I can't even tell you. It's been like, art has really been such a blessing for me personally. All right, I'm going to glue this down and hopefully it'll come out as I see it in my head. Hey babe, can you bring me some water, a glass of water for my paint, for my glue? A glass of water. After you do that, will you bring me a thing of water so I can put my glue brush in it? Right? All of us have had that. I just think for all of us, like, art has seen us all through everything. So if I had some major, like, disability where I couldn't do anything else, I don't know what I, I mean. I would still try and art. You know, I would still try to make art. I would still try to, um, I'd still try to do all that, you know? That's why when they asked me to teach the classes group here, I've said yes. I mean, even if they wouldn't pay me, I would have said yes. This is my, my this poor, one? yeah, poor paintbrushes, like, I let it dry bad. Yeah, so I mean that the fact that I think care even started the foundation and came to some of my live streams. It was super cool. I mean, I feel like Feel really grateful, you know. I feel like wow, I'm part of something so much bigger than me. Yeah, you know, art for me is definitely my escape. It is my escape. Maybe that's why I take so personally my all my things, you know, all my all my tools, all my all my crafting supplies. Maybe that is why, like. I take it so much more personally than, like, say, I don't know, other things. It's so funny. This morning he was like, we were going through all these boxes of stuff, and he was like, you're going to have to give up some of it at some point. And I'm like, I know. I said, I know. He's like, you're going to have to, he said, you're going to have to just throw it to the universe and whatever happens and you're not going to be able, it goes, don't look back. He was trying to give me a pep talk about me letting go of my stuff. It was so funny. You guys would have, you guys would have, you would have thought it was very sweet. He was definitely going for the, he was going for the. Hey, it's going to be really hard, but you can do it. <laughs> uh, 
I appreciated it. I appreciated him being like, and he's got a great sense of humor. So even though he may not understand my aesthetic or my artistic choices, he's very kind about it. There's no, there's no, he, he's just really sweet about it all. He is very sweet about it all. He does not, he just, he just goes with it. He goes with it, goes with it. You zone out and escape from your chronic pain. Ah, oh, crafting and watching. Girl, I have been zoning out and you know what? I was super good for so long on my low carb diet. And then we were just eating like whatever we had in the freezer. Cause I was like, you know, just like, and we had all of our kids here for a while. So for a while we had stuff that he and I, neither one would normally eat, but you know, they ate. So we were eating it and I'm telling you, it did not work well with me. I think I'm wheat intolerant and I was eating pizza or whatever they hit, whatever the kids had bought or we had in the freezer. And look, I've had this rash ever since. And I went to the doctor and they said, Oh, that's a, what did they call it? When your body is reacting. Oh my gosh. I can't even remember now. Anyway, they, they were the, the doctor's office was very, um, it was very funny actually, because I, I would not have thought first they said, Oh, it's just eczema. And I said, I've never had eczema. And then I went to the car. No, I must've gone to the, I had gone to the, um, acupuncturist and she said, Oh no, it's a, oh my gosh, you guys, I can't even think of what she told me it's called, but it's basically when you're allergic to something. Like it's a dermatitis from an allergy, like a, and she's like, you have to just completely cut out all wheat. She said, it'll probably take about 90 days for you to, 90 days for it to work on you. So I said, okay. So I've cut out all, um, I mean, my niece has celiac disease really bad. And so, I mean, she even like looks in her shampoo and stuff. I mean, who would have think they have a wheat derivative in shampoo? Like I wouldn't, well, what do I know? I'm no doctor or anything. But yeah, they're like on it about it. So I was like, okay. So no more wheat for me. 90 days. No, Carla, wheat forever. No more wheat forever. 90 days. It'll take 90 days for it. She said it'll take about 90 days for it to wear out of my system. She says, and I said, okay. Yeah, no wheat forever. No more wheat for me. I really wasn't eating that much wheat to begin with, but I certainly was having a, a lot more wheat than I was before. Um, maybe I should use a bigger paper clip. I'm thinking that's what I mean to do. 90 days for the rash to go away. I, I already feel better. I, I, I don't, I haven't had any since she told me that, but um, 90 days for the rash to go away, she said. She said it could take a little longer depending upon how my system works it out, you know? Because they gave me, like the regular doctor gave me some sort of medicine 
You guys, of course, I was allergic to the freaking medicine. That's just the way it goes for me. I was like, okay, I'm allergic. I wasn't necessarily allergic to the cream. I was allergic to, how did they put it? Okay, so the medicine has to be delivered in some sort of way. And I was allergic to the, I guess it can come in a lotion or a gel or a, I don't know, but I was allergic to whatever petroleum-based product was the, was the delivery system. Does that make sense? If I'm not, you guys, I'm just telling you what's going on with me. That's just me and my body. You know, everybody's, that's why I say you have to do you. Whatever works for you, like my girlfriend that drinks coca-cola all day long and smokes and does whatever and runs marathons i mean whatever you know it's her choice works for her oh no really deb oh wow so it says be careful of deb saying be careful of eggs too apparently if chickens are fed wheat and corn it can come through their eggs and affect you oh no Hi, Caitlin. How are you? Oh, girl, I didn't even think about that. See? Guys, I guess I'll just have to, like, stick to my, I don't know. I don't even know. Guys, I'm so over it. I don't even know anymore what I can really, like, tolerate and not. Every time I turn around, I'm allergic to something else. Grass-fed chicken eggs. I'll have to look for them. Well, the kind of cool thing about where we're going in North Carolina is there's lots of farms and there's lots and lots and lots of chickens. So we had kind of hoped we'd be able to have some chickens, but the house we bought in the neighborhood we're in, I mean, I don't know, we might be able to have chickens, but we kind of bought a house in town in, in a little town as opposed to a as opposed to a oh my gosh country not that we didn't want to buy it in the country it just happened to be the house that we the house that we felt that I fell in love with you guys this house for me is like my dream house and it and it it was like it, it's like it. Have you ever like ha liked a bunch of different things about houses, but you've never really like put it in to words or paper or put it down on put it down on paper or put it into words or done anything like that? Well, that's what this house is for me. It's like it was like my dream house, but I never like you know. It's just perfect. It's like really perfect for me. Oh, yeah, totally. Educate yourself. Read, read, and read, read. Organic food sections of stores sell grass-fed. You have a corn allergy, and I've been really careful about meat, about the meat I eat. The meat has been one of the hardest things to find, not corn-fed. Wow. You have your own, you have your own hens? Well, you guys, I'm kind of borderline going to maybe even just become, for a long time, I was macrobiotic. Years, years and years, I was macrobiotic. And then for a while, I, because I have such weird allergies, then for a while I was vegan. It didn't quite work so well for me being totally vegan, but like I had, I ate eggs. I had to eat eggs. I'm just, Caitlin, I'm just making some, um, embellishments to go in a journal. How are you? I saw that your sister, did your sister have another baby? Did I see that? Or was that me thinking it, me, me dreaming? And how's your, how's your pup? And how are you girl? You know, it took me for a really long time to figure out what happened to you. Not that I, I didn't really know, but I'm glad you're back and doing stuff. I'm just making some paperclip embellishments to go on this journal that I'm making to for to go for the Disabled Artist Foundation auction in December. So I, I'm trying to finish this little journal that you guys, I should probably figure out when I started it. It was a long, 
a long time ago. Um, it's been in my pile. It's been in my pile of like example journals for when I would teach classes. So I decided I was going to go ahead and try and finish it. It doesn't have all the embellishments, but I was going to try to put some little paper clip embellishments and put tags in here. And then I'll put a package of extra stuff to go with it. But it's got all my stuff. So what I was making today was I was making some, I was making some paper clip embellishments, like the eyeball ones that I used to make all the time. I was making those. I'm going to put, I'll do something off of this. I was making some, let's see. I did the bees and the lips, which I love. I'm going to go back and put some, I'll see if I could, hopefully I didn't pack my, my stickles or triple thick or whatever diamond glaze. I'll try to find that. I did that one and I did a couple of eyeball ones. I need to do a leg one. That's what I got to do. I got to find some legs. Um, just some little embellishments for this journal. And then they're going to, they're doing an auction in the middle of December on care hearts channel. Like I did this eyeball one. And I did, I did another eyeball one somewhere in here and a turkey butt, turkey butt and high heels there. I did that one and I love that one. I got to find a green eyeball. And then I did this one, the turkey and high heels. I must have cut that out eons ago. He, he did have another baby just from one. Oh, awesome. Congratulations to your family. How are you feeling, girl? So I'm just making some little extras. So I'm waiting for this one to dry. This one's going to be in there. It's going to dry, hopefully. I've got a couple of other ones that need to dry. I'm a little impatient. No, I know you were. I remember reading. Oh, girl, that's awesome. Congratulations. I send my love to you. So much love to you. What kind of job are you doing? All right, I need to put something off of this. I have beads, but I don't think I have any tools over here. This would make my life so simple if I had like brought everything in one place, but you guys, my stuff is so in random in boxes and everything, it's so bad. Okay. Well, welcome back, girl. We love you, and I'm so glad you're okay. I am so, so glad you're okay. Were any of you guys friends with Deb Roberts? Was it Roberts or Roberts Robertson? Were any of you guys friends with her? <coughs> she used <coughs> always used to come to my live streams and <coughs> always be supportive. She had some sort of a, a chronic illness, which I don't remember what it was. I'm sure she told us, but guys, I'm terrible at remembering stuff like that. I guess it's kind of like always wanting to see the good in everybody and not like focus on the, you know what I mean? Not, not want to focus on the, on the things that are wrong. Did any of you, did you, any of you guys know her? She's super positive, always supportive, kind, 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 and kind. I don't remember where she lived. To in graphic design, Caitlin. Oh my God, that's so awesome. Girl, that's so fabulous. Good for you. You're pretty sure you knew Deb? I think a lot of us did. Well, she passed away and suddenly and not from Corona. But I just found out and I wanted to send her partner. I can't remember her partner's name, but I wanted to send him. She had some chronic illness and uh, I don't remember what it was. But if you guys remember, but she's always super positive. Always come in the chat. Nicest, nicest lady. And um, 
Oh, APG, I think she came to your 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 streams too. Here, let me see. I'll tell you her whole. Um, hang on, I'll tell you what her name is. But I wanted to send her partner. I have her address somewhere. Because I know she bought a whole bunch of stuff in the summer from when I did my one of my mini sales. Um, for Defy when I did them, uh, when I did one with Care. And she collected a ton of my stuff. I must have sent her, I don't know how many packages I sent her, but I sent her a lot. And, um. I'm sorry, guys. It's Deborah Brown. Deborah Brown. I think she came to your streams too. Deborah Brown. Yeah, no, but I'm just saying, like, I wonder if, you know, it's like I didn't know her personally. I mean, I knew her from coming to streams and chatting with her. I didn't have like a personal relationship outside of here, but I certainly, um, Deborah Brown was her name. I'm sorry, I mis mixed her up with a different Deborah. Deborah Brown. I bet you guys were all Facebook friends with her. I mean, I was. I was Facebook friends with her. She used to come to. She used to come to my craft and chats all the time. Right. Do you remember she had like she had she had a chronic condition. She told us once, but I honestly, you guys, I don't hold on to that because I just try to see all of you as I try to see myself healthy. Right. So I don't remember what she had, but I remember her like posting something like she was moving. And I know her partner. Yeah, he's he's lovely. So if anybody, if, if any of you guys want her address, if you knew her, if you remember her, and if you want her address, message me on Facebook and I'll send it to you. And then you can send her partner a card or something. You know, I don't, you know, I think he's probably, I feel a little bit bad for him because I know recently she bought a ton of stuff for me for my, from the Defy auction, maybe six months ago. And I'm like, oh my God, she collected like some of these vintage magazines I had that I had been I had been, what, I can't call it hoarding. What do I, what do I call it, Jamie? Not hoarding. What did you tell me I have to call it? I can't remember now. You told me I have to call it something. Let's see if I have any tools over here. I have scissors. I have, I have pens. Let me see if I have any tools. I, ha you know what? I have her address. I will, I have it because I mailed her a bunch of stuff. Pack wrap. So I was pack ratting these amazing magazines from the 80s. They were from the 80s and the 90s, and I loved them. Just looking to see if I have any tools to make any, like, little... I have some wire. I have some <coughs> beads. Oh, I have pink skulls. Oh, my gosh. Is this too weird if I put pink skulls, if I make a charm with pink skulls? These are, like, pink skulls. I think I love them. <coughs> She bought a bunch of stuff from me, <coughs> and they were, these magazines I loved so much, and she wrote me how she loved them, and she was cutting them up and <coughs> doing stuff with them. Now I just need a pair of tweet, and now I just need a pair of pliers, okay? Because I have everything on the planet. I have some glue. I have tags. I have... Have random. I need to pay one just one pair of pliers. I must have one here. I can't have gotten all the way over here with no pliers. Guys, I'm gonna put some of my crazy tags in this journal. These are the remember the those tags I was making? There's some like crazy ones here. So I am, um, yeah, if, you, if anybody wants to send her partner a card, I think his name is John. I have it all in my email or whatever. I will, if you message me on Facebook and just say, can you please give me Deborah Brown's info? I'll give you her address and then you can send him a card. And just, 
I think it would be nice for him. I mean, I don't know him personally, but I can imagine the tremendous loss he has without without having her around. But even more so, like he's he's probably surrounded by all the crafty things that we all sent her. And just to have somebody say, hey, you know, I care about you. I'm thinking about you. I hope you're doing okay. And holler at us if you... Okay, this girl has no freaking flyers. How could I have gotten over here? I have paper. I have glue. I have beads. How could I have not? I made a point to like not totally put all. I shipped some of my jewelry tools, but I thought I kept like a piece, at least a pair of needle nose pliers around here. Yes. I'm so excited to get to my place to be able to just organize and let go and get myself together and have like just a crafty fiesta of whatever it is, you know, just a crafty, crafty, fun fiesta of figuring out where I want to be, what I want to make, what I want to do. That's what I'm excited about. That is what I am excited to do. I did find some pliers. Found a bag of pliers. Found a bag of pliers. <clears throat> you have a cat that it's trying to craft with you, and she sits, she sat on three lots of stuff already. Pack rat. I'm a pack rat. Yes, I'm, I'm going to stop saying um, porter and just say pack rat. I'm a pack rat. I'm a collector. I have a curated collection. A curated collection of the oddities. So I'm excited to like get some, get back to my space, get back, well, create my space. That'll be the first thing. Creating my space, which is exciting. Creating my space, then I'm going to put those tags in there. Um, creating my space and then getting, you know, it's so exciting. So did I tell you guys, I bought an old Victorian house. You guys not old Victorians are not for everybody, but I'm an old Victorian person. Like I like that sort of stuff. So I bought this old Victorian. Okay. I may just, I don't know what I'm going to make but I'll figure it out. That's when we sit here with my mess. I'm cleaning it up, though. I'm cleaning it up. I'm going to put these tags in there, though, for sure. Um, so I got this old Victorian house. And it's actually very big. And I'm so excited, okay? Because now it has enough room for me to have my own space and set it up and leave it up all the time. And it also has a place for me to have a metal smithing studio. So outside of the house has a little, I'll do a tour of it when I get there. Let's, let's hope it's like, yeah. Anyway, <clears throat> it's got, it, the outside of the house has a, a little, um, did I get your messenger? Did I get your message on messenger? Hold on. Sorry. <laughs> What's 20-ish? 20-ish. Sent me something. Hang on. Oh, hang on. <clears throat> um. <clears throat> So, um, I'm sorry, I'm like trying to get myself over here. Stevie is, has a yucky aftertaste, I agree. I haven't moved to my house yet because I'm still stuck in Hawaii. That's, this has been my whole purging uh, escapade. It's been stuck in Hawaii. So, I am, so I'm still stuck in Hawaii, but I'm almost out of here. We're, ho we're, we're hopeful it's soon. So, anyway, 
I can have my own craft space set up. And the house has this little stone house on the outside that when I went for, so we made an offer on the house side unseen. And then Blake went to the house because we had the inspection done on the house and they it needed some minor things like the house has 41 windows and then windows needed to be, they were painted shut. So in order for it to pass inspection, you had to do that. You had to do just all kinds of little things, nothing major. We would have hired somebody to do it, but nobody, the area is like kind of on fire and there's lots of people. Nobody's, there was no workers, put it that way. Nobody available to do it. So he, he went. So I had to, at some point I went down there and met him. I went for a job interview. That's a whole nother story, guys. That's a whole nother ridiculous, you guys could have a good laugh at me, <coughs> story. So I went for this job interview and I flew down there. So he had given me like a video tour when he got down there but I hadn't seen it yet in person. And when I saw it in person, it was like, have you ever been to a place where you just feel so calm and comfortable and you have no idea why? It was like that. It was like an exhale. It was amazing. So we did that. We went and did, we went there and we did that. And while we were there, he goes, oh, I didn't even get to show you the outside house. And you guys, we went into the little tiny out, it's small, little small outside house. And you guys, the guy was a metalsmith. And you know, that's how I made my living for years was I was a metalsmith. And I just started to cry. I just cried because like, what are the chances of you buying a house sight unseen or, or making an offer on a house sight unseen that has a metalsmithing component to it? You know, that's just kind of weird. So. I was completely excited, overwhelmed, all the above. And so I have that too. So I have my own, like I have, I have the space, I have the space, I have the metal smithing space. I have, and the third floor of the house, they did not, when we, when we bought the house, the third floor of the house was not considered part of the house because it didn't have any heating. The other floors have like baseboard heating and whatever heating. It didn't have any heating. That eyeball looks so cool. Um, and so they don't, they don't, they only consider, um, they only consider houses with the, with the where the heated areas are being part of uh, the square footage. So the house has a whole third floor that's completely finished that we found out today for or a couple days ago from the previous owner <clears throat> that um, all they did was open the, because all the heating is on the other floors, they just opened the door to the upstairs and the heat was fine. He's like, it's never needed heat. He said it's never needed any formal heating. So they didn't, the good thing for us in, in that way is that basically we got an extra floor of a thousand square feet that they didn't count as part of the house. So it was that much less expensive. Does that make sense? Or am I just rambling and telling you craziness? <clears throat> so that's what it is. So it's cool. So now I have all this like space and I'm super excited. I am super, super, super excited. He rises. Yeah. So we have somebody house sitting for us while we were, while we're here. We thought we'd be back there by now, but obviously we're not. So we have somebody house sitting and she's turned on all the heat. Like she did. And she's like, it's hot up here. Like she's so funny. She's like, I don't think you're going to want it like this. <laughs> she's, she's very funny. So I said, well, hey, whatever works. I said, you be comfortable. You, you know, you be comfortable. I don't want her to like think it's crazy for me. Right? So, but it's good for us because like instead of like, 
I'll give you guys a tour of the house. Realize it's it's a night it's a house built in the 1900s. It's not like um, it's not like um, it's not new. You know what I mean? It's old. Jamie, I just messaged you something. So, Jamie, love you. Love you more. So, anyway, that's that's the deal with my house. I'm super excited about it. I, um, I'm very excited about it for a bunch of reasons. I think it's been a long time coming. We've been... It's something we should have done eons ago. But I'm grateful that we're doing it now. So, we'll see. Because I don't know. I'm going to... At first, I... Um, so I don't know if I'm going to make a dangle. Maybe I'm, I'm thinking, I'm overthinking this because I'm forgetting that it's just going to go on the end of a paper clip hanging off, hanging off the, the, the journal. Let me see. Do I want to hang it? I have so many random everything here. This is like the most random. I don't have it was like I just tried to find whatever I thought I might use, which could have been anything, right? Whatever I thought I might use instead of. But I'm excited so that I can just go ahead and set up my stuff and I can leave it up. And even if all of our kids come, I don't have to un. See, the hard part for us living here is that houses, are, well, where we live, houses are small. I'm sure there's McMansions in Hawaii. Um, I don't live in one. So we would, wherever we were, whenever our kids would come, I'd have to pack up all my stuff. So we'd have room for them. So it's going to be kind of nice not to have to do that. You know, it's going to be kind of nice not to have to like, the kids come and visit, pack up my whole craft space, put it all in boxes, put it in the garage. So I'm excited about that. I do wish we were already there, but for whatever reason we aren't. So I just got to go with it. Just have to go with it. <clears throat> yeah, no shuffling. Hey. Hi, Darla. No shuffling. You got your package? Oh, good, Darla. You did. It was, I, I tried to pack it full. It was packed full, I think. Yes. We tried to, my hottie, he was like, he's, he's King Packer. Okay. Can I tell you? He's like on it. He's like, we're going to pack. Hi, Laura. He's like, we're going to pack it and nobody's going to, there's not going to be any room for anything. So I'm glad you got your package. You guys, they were all sent around the same time within a day or so of each other. So just be patient if you haven't gotten yours. That would be frustrating to have to pack your stuff up. Girl, I've been living that way 11 years here, 12 years here. Yep, definitely. Well, what I'm excited about is that, you know what, I'm going to have, we're already making a plan. Blake wants to have an art studio. He wants to have his own art studio up there. And I, and I said, go for it. Like on the third floor, it's beautiful. And one of our daughter, the 15 year old wants to sleep up there. So we'll have to leave it open. But um, yeah, so we're going to put, he wants his, uh, he wants an art studio up there, and I think I think I'm gonna put my craft room on the third floor. Hopefully, I have a pair of needle nose pliers. I'm gonna put my craft room on the third floor, and then I'm just gonna keep all my metal stuff out in the outside shed because you have to in that little house outside because you have to have really good ventilation doing metal work. I mean, it can be toxic, you know. So that way, I'm not doing any toxic stuff. 
your honey can pack a 26 foot rider truck, no problem. You opened your box? Oh, good. Thank you guys for your love and support. I'm glad you guys are getting all my treasures. Guys, honestly, I didn't know I had this much stuff. I mean, I guess I should have because I've been teaching classes for a long time, but I just didn't. I just didn't know. And I think that's like the hard part because like when you don't know that you've collected that much stuff, I didn't, you guys. I did not. I would have been letting go some of it before that. That's what happens when you can't have all your stuff out. 21 years in the military, you moved around a lot, girl. I've moved around a lot. No military here, but I am definitely, um, I'm definitely ready to like settle down. Does that sound, does that sound good to everybody? I'm ready to settle down. How many small beads? I wish I had a whole bunch of these. I know I have tiny ones, but I don't know where they are. I don't want to put out the bottom. I put out these. Let's see. Where they are. You can't have it all in one place. You're going to do an unboxing video? Oh my gosh. You guys, I'm sorry I didn't get to write you all personal notes. I was a little bit overwhelmed. But you know I love you, so I had every intention of doing it, but girls, just my life didn't work out like that. Okay, Missy Red ones. Okay, I have an idea. I don't know if it's going to work out, but we'll just see really soon. Okay, some orange ones. These pearls are too big. Normally I would use them, but I'm just going to use these beads instead. I have little pearls, but I don't know where they are. I don't have the colors I want. We have all these really cool little seed beads, so that they may work. Maybe I'll just use a green one because I want it to have like a lot of color because that journal kind of has color. <laughs> well, Deb, you retired in North Carolina and come visit me. You're going to have to come and visit me. <clears throat> Thanks, Darla. Oh, Tammy, I'm glad. Um, I'm not, you know, Deb, I used to live in Jacksonville. I used to live in Jacksonville and I taught at Jacksonville University for like a minute, a long time ago. Um, I'm going to be in Asheville, North Carolina, which is not that far. It is not that far. One of my favorite fabric stores is down there in um, near Pensacola. I bought, I can't tell you how many yards of fabric I've bought from there. Okay, I'm going to do one bead above, maybe two beads above. Let's see. I got an idea in my head and I'm like, okay, let's see how it works out. We will see how it works out. So what are you guys, what are you all crafting? Tell me what you're making. Tell me what you're working on. Are some of you guys making homemade, homemade cards. Some of you guys making some homemade Christmas cards. You 
guys, I even decided I'm not sending out Christmas cards this year. Is that terrible? I just can't. I don't even know if we're going to even be in. I don't even know if we'll be in our house to even put up a tree. And I'm just like, I just don't, I don't know why, but I just don't think I have it in me to make Christmas cards. Deb, I, you know what? Dawn and I've talked about that. You guys know Dawn from Let's Make a Mess. We've talked about how we're going to, she and I had a conversation about this. We're going to, um, we're going to rent one of the, we're going to rent like an RV and just travel around and craft with everybody. Wouldn't that be so fun? Oh, you're doing die cuts and assemblage for Christmas cards? APG, you're so on it, girl. You are so on it. And your cards, I bet they, I'm sure your cards are going to be fabulous. I can't even, I can't even, part of me thought, okay, I'll just, I'll, um, I'll just do some store-bought cards. I'm not even doing that. I told my sister, please don't send me anything. Got a couple of presents the other day from Cares Defy Auction. I bought um, some pot holders for one of my nieces and one of my daughters. Some those handmade pot holders or dishcloths from Jean's friend Triffany. about those i love those dishcloths i use those myself how many of you guys use those crochet dis crochet dis dishcloths are you do you guys are any of you guys into that i um i definitely do the handmade dishcloth i'm using those and i bought some of violet's gloves you're making tags and journaling cards for a swap. Ooh, that sounds nice. You're making them for your employees, right? For their Christmas bonuses. Nobody else. Trish, you guys are so awesome. Your father-in-law lives in Pensacola. Oh my gosh. Go visit him. Best fabric store ever. It's called, I think it's called the Fabric Outlet. If you message me on Facebook, I'll, I can tell, I can look it up and tell you what it is. Remind me though. Say fabric store in Pensacola, Pensacola Shelly. And I can tell you, I used to drive down there, buy all kinds of fabric. Working on two journals at the moment. I have a Christmas card ready to go. I mean, you girl, you guys are away. Yeah, Christmas cards ready to go. You can use those knitted dishcloths. I love those. Okay, I really love those. So. I mean, I don't know, you know, I came and tell you my niece or my middle daughter will even appreciate them, but I like them. Once you've ever used them, I think they work great because then you can just wash them, you know, and you don't have to do the whole thing. Aw, making bill paying less stressful. Thanks, Val. Well, I'm just trying to get this journal finished because you guys, I mean, if I don't do it now, I'm not, I cannot add that stress to myself to like get there and mail it out. And she, the auction's on the 15th and she wanted them before the 15th, but she wanted them like sooner than later and girls, I didn't get it together. So she'll have to get it when it is. And if, if mine doesn't make the cut this next time, they'll make it another time. You know, meaning like if, if she gets too many and she chooses not to, but I don't think so. Cause I, when I messaged her the other day, she said she had about 20 and you guys, their postage bills alone, just to mail out the, the stuff to the people. No, I'm not talking about mailing it out to people that buy things. I'm talking about mailing it out to the 
the disabled artists is crazy. They have like 70 artists now, and I think she has a hundred something happy packers, which is like a whole different group of people. So, okay, where is, um, where's that journal? I just want to see how far I'm going to let it hang off this. Look. Let me see, let me see. Then I'm going to add some dangles on the bottom of it. How many of you like to go into um, office supply stores just as much as you like to go into craft stores? Me. Although we don't have, we used to have some good ones here, but now we're down to like one sort of halfway lame office max. And it's not fabulous, so. Okay, let me see. How much do I want to hang out? Okay, so I, I guess I can put one more bead on the top and then I'll put some danglies on the bottom just trying to figure out it's going to be hanging off that paper clip on the side so <clears throat> I just I know that I have all these kind of great colors but where in the world are they Is it you can always find everything you don't want and not what you do want that is my mo okay everything you don't want i have a purple one this is one so i don't know you guys I'm not, I'm not saying I'm not going to do something for the holidays, but at this point, I can't even see it. You peruse the office supplies? <laughs> yes. It's like hard. Office supplies? You know, I would say next to craft supplies, office supplies are definitely a weakness for me. Keep the office supply closet in order. I hear you. I should show you guys. I don't know where it is. When I move, I'll show it to you. So I made this book. So a lot of the artwork that I make for myself, like my own personal artwork, is sort of just stream of consciousness. How many of you guys work like that? Where you're just like in the flow and it just comes. And it doesn't have to make sense to anybody but you. Right? So <clears throat> that's just how I make art. So <clears throat> we're going through my stuff not that long ago. And I find this book that I had made, this altered book. And I had made it just for myself. You know, it wasn't like, it wasn't for anyone else to even see and my hottie found it and he was like can I have this and I was like I thought he was joking at first you're in the zone and in the end it usually works out maybe not beautiful but it works out I'm right there with you I'm right there I'm absolutely right there with you so he like he like sees it and he's like I need that I want that and um, I'm like, okay. Hey, boo, how was school? That's good. Takes more vitamin C, okay? And do me a favor, don't get on the internet till I'm done, okay? Because yeah. Buddha kicked me off earlier. So to anyway, me, he said he wanted to keep it. And I said, okay. I mean, it was just an altered book. And then he's like, he looks at it and he goes, I love this. And you guys, it was just a complete stream of consciousness. So much so that I picked the book out for the cover. I didn't even know what the book was. I like I didn't read what the book was.
Am I able to? I'm not even at my new house yet. You know what's so sweet is the lady that's house sitting for me. She's unpacked some stuff for me, which I'm grateful for. If it wasn't for her, I don't know. Anyway, so he was like on and on about this. And I, you guys said, but I'll show it to you. It was just a stream of consciousness. It was like me. It was just me making a for myself. And it just happened to be the canvas just happened to be the artwork, the, the book. Well, none of these are my good pliers. These are like beadsmith pliers, which are not good. My tools that I sent to myself, let's see if this is one of them. No. I'll tell you the German pliers that I have that are rusted. All my tools are rusted, but I'll have to, I'll tell you when I get back, when I get to my house, when I get there. Better find the fabric. Oh, girl. I haven't mailed myself any fabric yet, although I've been tempted to because I have some that I just love. So my point in even saying it to you is that, so sometimes when you're making art and you may not think it's like, it's not, you may not think it's good or you may judge it or you may think whatever, you know, the person receiving it or, or noticing it, the, you know, the art is in the eye of the, of the, of the purchaser or beholder or the one that, you know, that gets you. But I'll show it to you guys when I get to, I think he packed it in his stuff. Well, I say I'll show you. I don't know if he did. If he, you know, the only fear that I have a little bit of, and this is probably going to sound so stupid, is like all the stuff I've mailed myself. You know, mail gets lost all the time. What if that's the case? You know what I mean? What if that is the case? What if I lose some of it? Not that it matters so much, but I don't even know what's in some of those boxes. Because I didn't pack them. He packed them all. I just made a pile of stuff I wanted to keep. I made a pile and then I've gone, I've combed back over it and combed back over it a few times to, to make it less. You know, I'm sure that in no time I will have accumulated whatever. You guys know how it is. Find your, you find you'll you'll have found yourself a treasure. You'll have accumulated another treasure without even knowing it. Magazine pages from Hawaii. You know what? I have a whole box of Hawaii stuff that I have to deal with. I haven't gone through it all yet. Um, I don't know what I'm going to keep. I don't know what I'm going to keep, Linda. But I have a whole box of Hawaii stuff. And I haven't even dealt with it. It's just a huge box. Some of it is, um, I've collected old yearbooks. I've collected old folklore, Hawaiian folklore books. I've collected, um, I don't know. I've collected a bunch of different things like that. And I haven't even dealt with it. It is in one big tub outside in the garage. Maybe it's two tubs. I was going to try to deal with it and go through it and see what I wanted to keep and what I was willing to part with. And then I thought maybe I would just, maybe I'd cut it up and make a bunch of packs and share it with everybody. Do you know what I mean? So that it's not just, so I'm not hoarding it all. Oh my gosh, I have the best house sitter. Now with a borrower at your post office. Oh my God. Jamie, I don't know. That's like insane. So I don't know. Would you guys be interested in any if I wanted to, if I decided to share it? I haven't even... I was afraid I was going to get a little too emotional, you know? <laughs> Is that silly or what? That I was going to get a little too emotional over my stuff? Oh, no. This house sitter, she's amazing. She's a friend. She's a really sweet friend of ours. And I just feel like so, we both feel like incredibly, like, fortunate to have her. 
I mean, we thought we'd already be there by now. So the fact that we aren't, but the fact that she, she's just been awesome. No, she unpacked all my kitchen stuff. Oh my gosh, you guys. So you guys know that we got like a huge amount of stuff from my Heidi's parents, right? We cleaned out his dad's house when we put his dad in memory care. And <laughs> right, you're right. Jamie, Jamie's right. That's a, that's not silly. She said emotions are very normal and they're ours to keep or share. I know that I'll miss being here. I know. I, I mean, it hasn't been easy, and I'm sure Val can pipe in. She's raised her children all here. But it's just become unaffordable for anybody. It's really, it's so sad. But it has become completely unaffordable for, for people that have lived here generationally. Um... Depending upon how much Hawaiiana stuff I I have, I have a lot actually, but I haven't looked at it in a while. I did find it the other day and I, my partner and I talked about it. I will let you guys know. I, I don't know if I'll be able to let you know by Saturday or whenever. I definitely won't be able to let you know by Friday because I'm just trying to deal with what I have right here um, to let go of. But I will let you know if anybody's interested you can you guys can pipe in and let me know you can go yeah i'd like a few of your hawaii treasures or whatever maybe i'll just put a bunch make a bunch of packs of them you know i don't know i'm just yeah i'm just trying to go with it for the moment this move for whatever reason has been so much more difficult for me than any of the other moves, and I've moved many times. This is not the first time. I'm not a newbie to moving. It's just been, this one's been particularly hard. I am not gonna lie. It has been, I don't have any wire cutters, but you guys see how in your pliers, they have a flesh mark in there. Those are wire cutters. There you see. I don't know where my wire cutters are. So. Well, I hope whoever gets this little journal from the Discipled Artist Foundation auction in December that you love it. So I just have to do a couple more and then I will be, then I'll hook it on to the, hook it on to the, onto the paper clip. Yeah, girls, I don't know. I don't know anything, really. Thank you for the thumbs up. I really appreciate it. Um, I don't really know anything. I know that I'm looking forward to having my own space again. I'm looking forward to figuring out what I want to do, what my next chapter is. I know I'm not going to go back to a job. I already decided I'm not. I feel like I shut off all my creativity when I worked a crazy construction job, construction coordinator job. Um, I think I'm going to, I think I'm just going to make art and maybe just stock my Etsy shop with all the things that I love and hang out with you guys and maybe take, maybe teach some private lessons. Maybe I'll teach some private metalsmithing classes. 
in person if anybody comes and then maybe you know get back to making jewelry and selling my jewelry i just i just realized that in going through and purging all of this stuff that i had so many more plans for my stuff than i was able to to do yeah and have life sales you're right that's good you should have left years ago i covered at poverty in paradise you know what you never thought to take the handle off the clip? Oh, girl. I always do. Yeah. I mean, Val, think about it. Do you know, I mean, I'll share something super crazy personal with you guys. I paid. I mean, where's my phone? I'll tell you how much. I'll tell you how much rent I paid. Let me figure it out. In the, in the 11 years that I've got, 12 years I've lived here. Okay, let's go. Okay, the first six, it was this. Hang on. In the first six years, I paid $115,200 in rent. Then the next five years, I paid $126,000 in rent. <clears throat> so $126,000 plus $115,000. That's how much money I have paid. <laughs> oh, my God. $115,000 plus, what did I tell you? It was 20, let me see. What is it? $26,000 divided times five. 130,000 plus 115,000, 245,000. And that doesn't even include my yearly rent that I'm paying this year. This year, I, I don't even want to tell you guys how much money we pay in rent now. Times. $27,000 I've paid in the last nine months. So add that up. That's almost $300,000 in rent. So I'm looking forward to that being done. Yeah, it's crazy expensive here. Poverty in Paradise. Val has hit the nail on the head. Val, did you guys own your house in Kauai? Did your mom own that house? Were you able to sell it? It's ridiculous how much money we've all paid living here. It is crazy. Yes, Jamie, have live sales too. Having live sales I like the best because I get to chat with all of you guys. And I see what you like too. I mean, maybe not everybody likes the weird stuff I like. We all have our own... We all have our own aesthetic of or our own thing of it, right? You bought a house 26 years ago. You bought my house. Wait. I bought my house 26 years ago, four years ago. Good for you. All right, Bree, we're sending you the best vibes. We're sending you the best vibes, Bree. You're going to get that job. She's going to get it, Jamie. I totally know. <coughs> we're all pretty weird in our way. <coughs> Well, I know I'm weird. I don't have any. <coughs> I have no qualms about my weirdnesses. It's been a struggle, though. I have to say, I don't usually have issues letting go of my stuff, but it's been a struggle this time. We love you, girl. Good luck, Brie. We're all sending you some good vibes, girlfriend. She's going to get it, Jamie. I just know it.
It's been emotional. It's been really difficult. It's been, and you guys, I can't even put my finger on why. Okay. It's not like I'm giving away my mother's heirlooms or stuff. It's just been really difficult. And I don't know what, I honestly don't know why. A tree branch stencil. What is a tree? What are you talking about? A tree branch, tree branch stencil? What? You're weird. You embrace it. Deb, I'm weird, girl. You know, I don't even, I don't think of myself as being weird. But like, when I see like what other people like or whatever, I'm like, oh, maybe it's just me and I'm weird. You paid $43,000 in rent in the past 14 months. Oh, Val. Girl, I haven't paid quite that much, but almost. And did I tell you guys the best? So, you know, when we moved, when we moved in here, we had to paint it and everything. It was not good. We And we had to buy you appliances. You can't just put everything in a truck and deal with it later. Oh, my God, you're absolutely right. I know that's what that's what my hottie said. He said, you know, he said this this move has been particularly, he thought hard for him as well because he said normally all the other moves you'd make, you just put your stuff, you pack it in boxes, you put it in truck, you move on, and you deal with it. Yeah. Oh my god, seriously. She sold it. Big mistake. Has she paid huge capital gains instead of me inheriting and selling it? Oh, my God, Val. I'm so sorry. Yeah, but your mom had Alzheimer's, so she probably was not in her right mind, right? Yeah, it's just special. Girls, I'm just telling you. It's been a, it's been a, it's been difficult. I'm not going to lie. I have been struggling. I've been struggling, especially the past few days, because I haven't been feeling great on top of it. And the not feeling great, but then the not feeling great and feeling like the time crunch of like really just having to let all this stuff go. And I, I'm finally getting better. Like I finally had like a, a moment last night <laughs> when I just said, I surrender. Whatever is supposed to happen will happen. I surrender. I cannot hold on to it anymore. It is not up to me. I let go. Oh, Val, I'm so sorry, girl. I love you. But you know what? You're building wealth for your own family. And that's all that matters. Oh, wow. For 400 Oh, my God, girl. Yep. There wasn't, a, there's not a capital. I thought, it, I thought she didn't have to pay capital gains if it was under half a million here in Hawaii. Am I wrong? I mean, not that I know, not that I have that. But Val, you know what? You took such good care of her and she's at peace. You're such a good daughter and such a good mom. I mean, I love seeing all of your grandkids and all of your, I love seeing all of that. I love seeing all your grandkids. I love seeing all your posts. I don't get to see all of it all the time. Hey, if you guys notice at Facebook, like suddenly you just don't see people anymore. You're like, what? You know, Facebook has its own, has a mind of its own. I don't have any head pins or I would just dangle some other beads off. I don't have any head pins, so I have to do it this way. I have to do it. <clears throat> and can you imagine if you could have waited to sell it now? You'd have probably gotten double that. Hated by this in your face these days, girls. I'm staying home. I'm not going to go out. Um, you know what it is? A lot of people are moving here. This is this is what makes it crazy here, okay? And I wouldn't have moved here if I hadn't been coming for a job. I mean, that's why I initially moved here all those years ago was for a job. Um, 
what's really hard is people come from the mainland with mainland expectations. And now what makes it even more hard is that people are coming with remote jobs. So before people used to come and if they couldn't get a job, they'd leave, right? Or they couldn't find a job. And getting a job to support yourself here is not easy. Just one job. Most people have multiple jobs. So people are coming right now. Thanks for our lovely governor. Saying, come, come. Um, with remote jobs, we don't have the same resources or access to services that you do on the mainland. They're coming here with that attitude of like, you know, like they think they're on vacation. And now they're pricing everyone out of the market. So who's going to wait on you? Who's going to be your... Who's going to be your server? Who's going to be your dry cleaner? Who's going to be your, um, who's going to, you know, ring up your gas, ring up your groceries? Who's going to do all that? And the problem is, is that there's not, <laughs> it's not like the mainland where you can just like drive a little further out, you know, oh, well, I, I work a job in town, but I live a little further out. There is no place to live. Val, you did the best you could. What could you do? Um, so what's happening is all these people are coming here, and it's a beautiful place to come on vacation. I'm not telling you not to come on vacation. But when you come on vacation, it's a little bit like Disneyland, you know? But behind the scenes, well, it's like not the – first of all, the ocean and the natural resources here are not an amusement park. People die every day on vacation here doing stupid things. But second of all, it's like, so all these people came with these remote jobs, which is great, but they are not, they're, they're, they're paying three times the amount of rent that any of us can afford. And then, you know, who's your school teachers? Who, who's going it, to, it's, it's a real deal. It is a real deal. So when we move out, they're going to raise our rent He's raising our rent by 50%. 50%. He's raising our rent by 50%. Whoever moves here is raising their rent by 50%. And because there's a shortage, at least on my island, there's a shortage of housing, period. Um, we don't have the hate thing. <coughs> we definitely have a lot of other things. You know, we have a lot of other things. All right, I think I'm done with this. Let me see if you put him on there. Let me see if he's dangles enough. Or if I need to put more dangles on him. Val, how's your daughter in Vegas? How's she doing? Thanks, you guys, for the thumbs up. I really appreciate it. Yeah, soon Hawaii will be investor on all vacation rentals. But where are they going to put all the people that need to work the vacation rentals? Okay. Where are they going to put them? Where, where are they going to go? I mean, what are they going to do? Are, are they going to, is, are we buying up the island of Molokai? Are we buying up the island of Lanai? And we're going to just bus, we're going to uh, ferry people back and forth. We can't buy Lanai because Larry Ellison already did that. You know, I mean, all right, let me find my book. <clears throat> so we're back to the book again, you guys. We're back to the book. We're back to the the book. We're back to the book. We're back to the book. Back to the book. Is this where I had that? I don't know if this is where I had that or not. I must have had something here because this is like a thin. You guys, I 
a coffee dyed these super thin um, dictionary pages, or I don't know what they were, but they coffee dyed amazing and they make that crinkle noise. Like, you know, they make like such a cool crinkle noise. That might be too thin to put it in there. Let's see. <clears throat> I don't know, you guys. I'm looking forward to being in the land of my friends, of my peeps, of my crafting community. I'm looking forward to coming and crafting with or near you guys, wherever that is. Maybe I'll put it here. Maybe I'll put it. No, that's a thin one, too. I think this was where the other paper clip was going to go. Um, let's see. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to like, you guys are always welcome to come craft with me. I will have a space and I won't have to clean it up all the time. <gasps> guys, do you know what a, like what an exciting thing that is for me to not have to clean up my crafting stuff to be able to share it with people? Woohoo! Okay, let's see. I thought I had it clipped with a bunch of heavy stuff. No, that's not it. Hi, Carrie. How are you, girl? How are you feeling? Thank you guys again for everybody that supported me and my, my emotional, <laughs> my, my emotional neediness lately. My crazy sales, like almost crying as I let my stuff go. Oh my gosh, you guys, how ridiculous, right? How ridiculous. Okay, where did I have this one clipped? All right, I can put some more. I can find another place to clip it. All right, let me just look at the side of the book. Let's see, where would it be best serving to have a dangling clip thing? Let's see. Maybe I'll do it over here. Maybe this Maybe this one will be better if I do it. Oof. I need to clip everywhere. What am I doing? I'm, I'm unclipping and I need to be clipping. Where's that one that is drying? Let's see, is it dry yet? Maybe this one's dry now. Okay, that one's there. Maybe I can put this one here. you enjoy hearing real stuff? Well, I can only be real. You guys know me better than that. I think it's kind of cute hanging off. What do you guys think? And you know, whoever gets this, you can move all this stuff around. Please don't leave it away the way I did it. I want to see if this one came out good. I'm definitely going to find my triple thick for this one because I am going to love an admit one. Maybe I should paint on it a little. My paint on the tag. Just want to make sure it's all smashed in. Let's see where am I going to put this one? Well, I can't be anything but real, you guys. And I, and I, I'm not trying to be a, a a downer. I'm definitely not trying to be a Shelly downer here. What have you missed? Nothing, girl. I'm just making a journal to put in the December Defy auction and just making some clips to go with it. Got my whole bag of stuff I was going to put in here. So let me. Made some eyeballs, girl. That's what you missed. You missed me working on some eyeballs. You missed me working on eyeballs, okay? I've been working on some eyeballs. Working on some eyeballs. Eyeball charms. I have been working on eyeball charms. That is what I've done, girl. Working on some eyeball charms. See, I got that one. I'm going to find that triple tick. I love that blue eyeball. Love it. Love it. Love it. Maybe. Is this one a thicker page? You guys, you can tell that I made this from such old books that I was not thinking about, like, possible long-term use. Okay. Let me see if we like it. Okay. Do we like it so far, you guys? We've got our we've got our skull charm here. We've got our admit one here. 
and I think I'm going to paint on that. It sticks out a little far, but oh well. You can stick it on the top of the page. It doesn't have to stick out on the side. We have our, what does this one say? We have our gravity one. Now i got to find some legs. It needs some legs. It seriously needs some legs. Okay, what do you guys think if I paint like a hibiscus on the front here? Thanks, APG. Libby girl. I don't have any googly eyes. Yes, laugh out loud. Me and my eyeballs. I know, right, Carrie? You know what it is? It's like when you look at somebody in their eyes, don't you just like see them and feel them and know them? I mean, it's like a real thing. This admit one kind of fits out further, but oh well. Leave the cover alone. You like the brown cover? You like the brown? This is definitely old pages in it, you guys. So whoever collects this, please know it was made with love, but it's made with old book pages. It has it is made with some old book pages. This one needs to be folded in. Look how clip up there. There is, I know I had another clip. Here's one. You like the brown cover? You guys, I have some really cool old Reader's Digest ones that I don't know like what I was thinking or how I was thinking it or whatever, but there are some pretty cool ones. My admit one came out. I need to put it, maybe I'll put my admit one up here. I can put it inside the book. Or I can make another one where it actually doesn't stick all the way out. That I could do too do that as well where it doesn't stick all the way out where it just sticks partially out or clip it to something inside here I'll try to go through and find some more of my handmade tags and put them in here ones that have painted or that are kind of wild or I through the window of the soul I agree with you Deb Deb you get me Okay, it knit one's inside. It's not really sticking out now. But I have my have my skull hanging out. My little skull charm. I'll try to make a few more charms on it. And then it also has like the bookmark one and then this one. And I will keep working on it. I gotta find my triple thick. You have a cabinet of fancy Reader's Digest? Oh, girl. <clears throat> I need to go through and clip it all. But look, it's getting fatter. It's getting fatter. <clears throat> so, APG, when I get my butt back down to Texas, I'll come and craft with you. I'll give you a whole long notice. And come and craft with you. I made one of my friends down there upset because the last time I was down there was when my aunt was so sick and passing, and I didn't go see anybody. But I was within like, I don't know, half an hour from where you are. You get me? Yeah, it's a little out there, but you know, whoever gets it is going to love it. Whoever says, okay, they bought, you know, because I don't, because I don't sell my jewelry, I don't sell my journals. I either make them for class or for myself or I'm not a mine are just eclectic and weird okay there's no uh oh girl I don't care if when you guys come to my house I have dogs and cats I have one little blind dog she's so blind but we love her and we have a little cat and we love her we love all of them and girls, I don't clean up before you come to my house. So if you want to make an unannounced visit, you're always welcome. But don't expect my house to be clean or my dishes to be done. But there'll be lots of crafting. Coffee, crafting, 
soda, diet soda, regular soda, whatever soda, <laughs> and crafting. <coughs> I can guarantee you that. I can't guarantee you anything else, though. I cannot guarantee you any, can't guarantee anything else. I can guarantee some crafting and I can guarantee some fun. And I can guarantee some coffee, some tea. <coughs> Maybe a glass of red wine or you can be YOB. You guys can totally always be YOB at my house. There's no pruding here. No pruding, no judgment. You can do, you do you. What more can anyone want? I know, right? It, my house will be, it'll be, you're always welcome. Warm, friendly, fun, old furniture. <laughs> my friend, she's so sweet. She's like, she, she's so sweet, the person that's house sitting for us. She said, well, I did unpack some of your kitchen things, and I just want you to know you have multiples of many things. And I said, well, of course I do, because half of it came from his dad's house and half of it came from his mother's. And she's like, well, I tried to put it up the best I could, but she was so funny. She's like, well, you're just going to have to deal with it. If you don't like what I've done, I said, I, I love what you've done. Are you kidding? Anytime anybody does something for me, I'm so grateful. How about you guys, all right? Like I've never had a, I've never had a wife. I need a wife, you know. I need, I need, I need somebody. So she said, "I put it all away. It's functional." Because we were talking about it the other day, I was like, you "Should turn on the fireplace because it has like three or four gas fireplaces, and one of them's in the kitchen or in the like the eating area near the kitchen." And I said, "You had to turn it on." And then I said, "Oh no, don't turn it on," because I remembered that it had a whole bunch of stuff. You know, Blake he just went and got a whole bunch of stuff from storage and just dumped it in the house, and then he came here to help me. And then, and then she's like, oh, no. I said, don't turn that one on. There's so many boxes in there. And she's like, oh, no, those boxes are all gone. Move to Australia, Deb. Deb, I've been to Australia. I love Australia. I love everything about it. Well, not the spiders, not the big crazy spiders that I was around. But other than that, I liked it all. The spiders kind of did me in a little bit. But I, I love Australia. Are you kidding? We've talked about, like, once our kids are grown, like we have this one that's 15. Once she's gone, like, what do we want to do? We've talked about it. We've talked about like moving out of the country. If we could do that. We have talked about it. How many of you guys have talked about moving out of the country? Have any of you guys? I know it's not just me. I know it's not just me. We have, we've seriously talked about it. We have talked about it. We have talked about. We have talked about it. It used to be a time I thought, I think Americans could move to Australia much more easily. I don't know about that anymore. Probably nobody wants Americans. <laughs> Because they think we're all like one or the other and none of us are like any of it. You guys know what I mean, right? They think that we're all like, I don't know. It's like when I, you know, I was born and raised in Texas. And I remember when I went to, um, I went to summer camp. I was in high school. I went to like Muncie, Indiana to Ball State University. Had an amazing drama camp and I went there. And everybody asked me how many Indians my my father had shot, which I found very comical, but, you know. You know, APG, I haven't been to Ireland. I've been to a lot of places, and I haven't been to Ireland. I have to go. I am definitely, Ireland is definitely on my, Ireland is definitely on my uh, bucket list of places to go. Oh no, they asked me how many Indians we am. You know, it just so happened that my grand my parent my grandparents did have horses. My grandfather had a farm and all those things, but those are not typical when you live in a city and 
when you live in Houston, not everybody has like a, you know, it's not like you're like a free for all of like, you know, whatever or their ideas of it. And they, yeah, they asked me how many Indians my parent my uh, had I shot, and you went to Ball State for your undergraduate degree. It's loverly there. You understand the winters are hard, dark, and cold. But isn't that what drinking Guinness is for? <laughs> drinking Guinness is for the, the hard, dark, and cold winters? Am I wrong? I don't know, you guys. We've all thought, we've talked about it. I mean, I've talked... My hottie and I've talked about it. We've talked about how we have, you know, where we can imagine ourselves living and our children, all of it. We've talked about it. We created crafting farming community. Well, I'm excited about a couple of things moving to Asheville. One of my really good friends is all into organic farming there so she's already like i've already talked with her and she's like guinness is yucky super yucky oh i love i love guinness i love guinness i haven't had a guinness in a good guinness in years because you can't really get it on tap here don't tell the other texts that guinness is Guys, I like black beer, okay? I just can't help it. I like really dark porter beers. Like, that kind of beer is my jam. Although saying that, being on a low-carb low carb diet means you don't drink beer. So, I'm not drinking any beer. Girl, I'm all for whatever you want to drink for yourself. You know me. I'm all about you do you. I do me. I'm all about that. Guys, you know, when I'm my youth, I could really drink. As my age now, I cannot drink. I cannot drink. I cannot drink. It's like, I don't know. My kids make fun of me. They're like, have one. I can drink wine, but I can't drink like real drinks anymore. Oh, that sounds awesome. I'm telling you, I, I can have one tequila drink, one, like one, I'm a one drink wonder. I could have a couple glasses of red wine, but other than that, I just, I don't, I don't know. Too old, I guess. I guess that's all it is. It's all, it's all about the age. Yes, you can drink tequila on a low carb diet, but it's like, I'm not, tequila's not my jam. I mean, I like tequila enough. I mean, I'm just, I don't know. Guys, I'm just, I can't drink anymore. I used to be able to, like, I could actually have, like, two drinks and be fine. But now it's like, forget it. I have one drink and I'm done. One drink. I'm a one drink wonder. You vote for a pool indoor and out all year round? A lot of people have amazing pools. Um, I will miss the ocean. What, what, what else will I miss about being here? I will miss the ocean. I will miss the weather. Most of my friends have already moved, so I won't miss them. Val, have you found that? Most of your friends have already gone? Maybe not, because you've lived here a lot longer than me. Most of my friends are gone. They're, they've all moved back to the mainland or moved somewhere where it was more affordable. Um, I will miss, what else will I miss? I'll miss, I miss, I'll miss the fact that we have almost 12 hours of daylight every day. Although saying that, I think lately our, our sunsets have been, Sunsets have been around six o'clock. They're usually around seven. And so I'll miss that. I'll miss the daylight hours. Um, I 
I miss the food. The food here is so good, but it's different. And you know, it's like it's like a melting pot of Asian fusion food. Wouldn't you say that, Val? Wouldn't you say that it's a melting pot of Asian fusion food? Food. Well, Tammy, we we're already supposed to be gone, but we're not. Okay. We're not gone yet. Hopefully at the end of this month. And then I have to come back and teach a class on Big Island. And then and then I'll be in North Carolina for good. We have spam on the mainland too. You know what? I'm not a big huge proponent of of spam. Although let me just preface this by. If any of you have, my father was much older, so he fought in the war. He fought in World War II, and he fought in the Korean War. He was old, my dad, much older than my mother. And we had spam growing up. I mean, when you've ever, I guess, ever had, my father was in the Navy, when you've ever had like a, you know, When you've ever had a, a parent or known somebody that's been in the armed forces for any length of time, I think spam was like a part of it, you know? But I don't really eat spam, but my kids do. And they love spam musubi, which if you've never had it, don't knock it till you try it. It's actually very good. My daughter, my littlest daughter, it's her, one of her favorites. When my middle daughter went off to school, I had to send her a, she left with my little, my little musubi maker. It's not really a maker. It's just like a little mold that you could put your, that you could mold your rice in. So, you grew up with Spam. I am closer to you in West Virginia. Carrie, I am. Guys, I'm super excited about it. I, I mean, there are so many things about Hawaii I'll miss, but I won't miss the cost of living. I won't miss all of the stuff going on right now. You grew up with some leftover depression food, our parents. Yes, we're used to it and they pass it on spam. And yes, definitely. Are you kidding? I can totally relate to that. Yep, I get it. Definitely depression error stuff. Tammy, where are you in West Virginia? Where are you? Thanks for the thumbs up, girls. And I'm going to make one more charm. Oh, you guys, I'm telling you, this whole moving thing definitely definitely i definitely had my own uh reactions to it and i don't mean in a bad way it's just been it's been i've been stressed out i'm not gonna lie i have been stressed out but i'm trying to get better i'm trying to be better about it i'm trying to Because I have more beads than anything. And I, why is it always when you don't need it, when you can't, when you don't need it, you can find it. When you need it, you can't find it. That is how it rolls with me. You're in Princeton? You're in the top of West Virginia, 45 minutes from Pittsburgh above Wheeling. Well, you guys, we definitely will have to have some sort of a craft retreat. 
especially when COVID's finally like in a different place. Although, can I tell you, people are, they act like it's over. And I'm like, oh, okay, but it's not. How many of you guys have experienced that one? People are all acting like it's back to normal. I was watching this friend of mine. I love to watch this uh, blog of this girl that lives in Thailand. Right now she's visiting her family or and their tra they traveled to New Orleans. Guys, I watched her vlog a few days ago. Not one person was wearing a mask or social distancing. And they're all just sitting on top of each other. And I'm just like, yikes. It's like, we don't even know where we're going to end up soon. Like, we haven't we haven't gotten the go-ahead that can no longer. I mean, every day here, people are getting it and giving it and passing it. Good for you, Laura. But vaxxed or unvaxxed, I, my best, one of my dearest friends, her daughter Vax died, 32 years old. She was vaxxed. All of her friends were vaxxed. They all just pretended like life was back to normal. She died of COVID maybe a month ago. 32, healthy as anything. Healthy as anything. Yeah. So vaxxed or unvaxxed. I mean, it doesn't matter. We should all still be wearing masks and being safe. We can get it and give it no matter what. I, just the only way that we can actually combat this truthfully is if we all mask, period. It doesn't matter if you're vaccinated or not vaccinated. Mask. My, my nephew went to a concert last week. I was like, he posted all these pictures on his Instagram account. Not one of them. Not one of them. At this out, this crazy concert that was like, I don't know who the person was because I'm not up on all the who's this, that, and the other. They were all dancing, singing, none of them with a mask. I'm like, I'm like whatever. I can't. Yeah. It's just the only thing that we know for sure is we can't spit on each other through a mask. <laughs> so like mask. Like, don't want to protect yourself? Protect your neighbor. Mask. Don't get me started. That's the one thing Hawaii is very strict about is masking. My daughter goes to school. She's back in school full time, but they mask. 100% of the time. No, my girlfriend's daughter had no underlying conditions. Zero. Healthy as anything. She was a roller derby queen. She had no underlying health conditions. Zero, 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 zero underlying health conditions. That's why we were all shocked. 32 years old. Yep. They're making masks optional. Uh, uh, yeah. I don't know. I just, I'm glad for, you know, there's a lot of third world things about being in Hawaii. Val can attest to that. But I'm super happy that the one thing that they definitely have enforced is mask wearing. Because we have more people come visit from all over the world. And we don't need that lax, that lax feeling of, oh, I'm just going to be fine. And, you know, you don't know who you're going to take it home to. People live multi-generationally here. You know? <gasps> you lost a family member to the shot reaction? Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. I have a really good friend who lost her husband to the same thing. He was a surgeon. And he worked in a hospital. And he was vaccinating because that's what they were doing. And he got the first dose. And he died seven days later. It was horrible. It was horrible, 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 horrible. Anybody dying, vaxxed or unvaxxed, horrible. Horrible, horrible, horrible. Pointless deaths.
Oh, your whole family has it? Oh, my gosh. That's horrible. Yes, it, it's like it doesn't, you know, it, it's not, it'll get whoever. It's like, that's why I'm like, wear a mask, you know? What about the, I have a friend, this is going to sound terrible, young guy in Texas, love him. I love him. One of my dearest friends, he, they social distanced, he did everything, they did all this stuff, and he went to visit his in-laws. They were all social distancing and what have you not, and he was an asymptomatic carrier. He gave it to his in-laws and his father-in-law died. Vaxxed, I might add. Vaxxed died. And he said never, he's like, he's like, this is for real. Asymptomatic, gave it to his father-in-law, his father-in-law died. Because they thought they were all good and they didn't mask, I guess, when they were together. I don't know, like they had to have, I don't know. I just feel bad. It just makes you feel bad. It makes you know that life is short None of us are, no one is immune from it. And we all need to care enough about each other to wear a damn mask. Wasn't that the only way they cured the Spanish flu was everybody wore a mask? Guys, why can't I not? I have, I have loads and loads and loads of every color bead. Why can I only find three that are this size? It's very frustrating. I know I have more. Where did I put them? Yes, wearing a mask cuts your chances of getting it by forty by ninety percent. I'm just like I wear a mask. I, you guys, I have. You can hear me with my asthma and my whatever. Wearing a mask all day long is not easy for me. Okay. But when I worked that job, I wore it. Oh no, a local family unvax, four of them died and they left their seven year old without anyone. He's lost both parents and grandparents that lived with him. Yeah, but, but Malia, you don't know their makeup. You don't know that like my friend's daughter vaccinated, Pat, 32 years old, died. It was like, and it was so weird. It was like one day she called me and she goes, um, her, I'm not going to mention her daughter's name. She goes, she tested positive for COVID. Please pray for her. And I said, I said, okay. And, but I had remembered her daughter posting like, cause she works, she lives in Florida, her daughter. And she works for like the County, like social services. And um, everybody in her office got it. They were all vaccinated. And I don't know who, they don't know who gave it to them. It could have been like a, could have been one of the, you know, one of the people that they work with. And, they were all young. Um, she was the only one that died, but one of them had such sort of severe reactions. They had to have, they lost some circulation and had to have part of their limbs amputated, which I was like, wow. I, I mean, I guess that's what, what happens when you have poor circulation, but I, I didn't know, like, I was shocked. I was like, a limb amputation? Like, why aren't we talking about that? That's like crazy. And then I remember, remember that guy that that actor in New York who was like one of the first ones to get COVID and his wife blogged about it, the whole thing. Like he went to the hospital. He never got out. She never got to see him again. Don't you remember that? He was like a actor in New York city. Anyway, I remember vaguely after my friend told me about the amputation thing, I remember vaguely that he had limbs amputated and I was like, wow, like, is that just something like, I don't know anything about circulation, but is that something that's common with people with poor circulation? Your daughter got very sick from the shot. Oh, I'm sorry, APG. The first shot, I, my, one of my oldest daughter, you know, they wanted to travel back to Europe so bad and they were mandating shots and, you know, he works most of the time in, um, he works most of the time in Asia. And so they both got shots. She got sick, so sick. She told me she was sick for like a, a month from her first shot. And then the second shot, she was also sick. Very, very, very sick. 
and she wasn't here, so I don't know. She was in, they were in Puerto Rico when she got it. So I, I think everybody's like, it's like everybody's makeup is different, you know? You just have to respect that about everybody. Well, I'm glad it didn't bother you. Yes, respect somebody's choice. Respect. I respect your all of your choices to choose what's right for you. And I just expect that in return. I expect that everybody will respect what I choose, whatever that is. If I choose to drink diet soda or Coca-Cola, so be it. Or Sprite Zero. Oh, I'm so glad, Laura. Guys, my post lady, she's like, what's going on here? I expect you guys to respect my right to craft with trash. Okay? So, oh, hi. Hey, Christy. So she, Christy's in her. So she's telling us all the strains of COVID have a tendency to affect clotting factors. A lot of the autopsies of COVID victims are showing clots in lungs as well as brain tissue. Wow. That's awesome. To, thanks for, thanks for telling us. Thank you for telling us, Christy. Look, I respect all of your rights to do whatever you want to do with your body. It's your body. There is no judgment coming from me. But I just think there's a lot of stuff that we are so quick to be so judgmental, like about different things like, OK, I'm overweight and I'm having a diet soda. You know, I, I've been in places where people will like say something or um, or I'm overweight and maybe I have a second piece of cake right? Yeah, I agree with you, APG. Um, like, haven't, haven't you ever, you guys have definitely gone through that. I cannot be the only one that's been like a chub and like somebody says, oh, having that second piece of cake, you know, right? Or um, let me think of something else. I don't know, just stupid shit like that. You know, it's like, please, you do you, I do me. So I am grateful, though, in Hawaii that they do ma mandate that because we have so many people from all over the world that come here. And, you know, it's 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 scary. And we live multi-generationally like everybody has a tutu that lives with them. That's grandma. And nobody wants to see their grandma have something happen to them. No, I agree with you. I don't tell anybody they're wrong for whatever their beliefs are. That's not my deal. Please. I can barely do me. Okay. I can't do you too. I can only do me. I can't even find all my beads. Okay. Get you some celery sticks. Craft with trash. <laughs> if you see my ball, you're going to have your third piece of cake. Oh my God. You guys, I had a boyfriend once. His grandmother told me now I was in my twenties, 20 and, t and I was 20 and skinny. Okay. Back then. And she told me, you guys, you guys will appreciate this. She told me, she goes, you know, you're a pretty girl when you wear makeup. <laughs> I was like, what? Yep. I'd have that third piece of cake too. Oh, I see what you're saying. The only thing that flies all over me is the assumption that when someone dies of something that they have, 
Homer morbilities. It's like a new, well, what was she wearing? No, I get it. Yeah, if you drop some of that weight, oh, girls. Yeah, she told me I was pretty if I wore makeup. I was like, so you know what I did? I didn't wear makeup anymore after that because I was like, um, I don't think so. I'd say, you're pretty if you weren't old. You know, I was like, that's kind of how sassy I was at that age. I was not disrespectful, but in my head, I was like that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm right there with you guys. But for me, I'm choosing what's best for me, which is going to be stay home. Stay home. Stay home. Wear a mask. Wash my hands when I go out. Stay home. <laughs> yeah, the victim blaming is how people reassure themselves that it can't happen to them. But girl, when my friend's daughter died, we were all devastated. We were all devastated. It was so horrible. My friend, she's really having a hard time. I mean, really, really having a hard time. She remember I told you about her, Christy, they put her on the ECMO. Whatever that was. Remember I told you about that? Yes, we definitely want to come to it. Malia wants to come to Ikea, okay? So we're inviting ourselves to come over and craft with you, Christy, when we go to Ikea. Of course, I'm not even there yet, so. <laughs> we're, sure, we're inviting ourselves to come to Ikea for you to go to Ikea with us, although we're, I'm not there yet. Because Malia's dream is to have, what's the kind of shelf you want, Malia? What kind of shelf do you want? Yeah, it was, she was 32. I'm telling you, Christy, it was so horrible. It was so horrible. I don't even want to think about it. All I know is that I spent, and that was not that long ago, guys. I just spent almost every day on the phone with her. And she was crying and crying, my friend. And I was just like, I didn't even know what to say, you guys. I did not know what to say. I just told her I loved her and I was right there. She doesn't craft, so I couldn't tell her to get out her glue stick, you know? The Alex collection from Ikea. I have to go on and look at this Alex collection. I just want a flat file from some antique shop. But Malia wants a whole, she wants Alex, okay? She's ready for the Alex. Oh, that's awesome, Christy. Malia is all about the Alex, whoever Alex is. Malia wants Alex. Does Brian know about Alex, Malia? We just need to know that. Does Brian know? Does Brian know you like their cabinet drawer thingies? That's what she likes. Alex evidently ha has some hookup with some cabinet door thingies, some cabinet drawer thingies, and uh, Malia wants that. Malia's all about their cabinet drawer thingy. Okay. So Friday, I have a ton of wallpaper books. I have a ton of fabric. I have some dyes. I have, I haven't broken into my Hawaiiana stuff. I just can't, I haven't done it yet. I have some books. I have some trims and weird stuff. And then I have like the eclectic, weird, all kinds of everything. Um, it'll be earlier, Shauna. I'll try to do one where I can set it up. If I can figure out how, APG, can you help me with this? Okay. When you go to Creator Studio and you um, create a stream for a future date, okay, how do I get back to that? Because what I found for myself, this it didn't give me a go button. I didn't know.
but you have a beautiful studio APG. You have like a whole room and I love that. I love your studio. Hopefully mine will look as halfway good. Okay. You want Hawaiian stuff? I just haven't got Deb. It's just so emotional for me. It's so stupid, but I have a huge bin of it. I'll try to go through it. I just can't do it by tomorrow. It may not be until so I, I don't know if I can go through it. I just, when I realized how much stuff I had um, saved, I, I, um, I've saved a lot. So Shauna can help me out. Okay, Shauna, go for it. Help me out, girl. You're very grateful you have a check. Okay, just need to go into the sound. Click the live under the content. Otherwise, okay, wait, hang on, Shauna. Shauna, just stand on this line with me really quick and let me just see if I can find it. Okay. Shauna was my help last time when I had like something up and usually it used to be right up at the top when I used to do it all the time, but because I don't live stream much anymore, because I've been going through my own ridiculousness. Okay, Shauna, while I've got you here, let me just see if I can do it. Okay, let me just go. Um, Oh, I can't even get to it, so I can't even see it now. Maybe you'll have to do it with me later. <laughs> you'll have to do it with me later. I'll message you later, Shauna, when I'm not, because I can't, evidently I can't create another live stream while I'm on live streaming. <laughs> no, you can't create a live stream while you're live streaming, so I couldn't even look at it. So can I look at it under here? Okay, I can look at it under here. Where do I go to? I go to sound is what you said. Creator Studio. I can wait. You can, I can do it later. You can show me later. You don't schedule, you go to the camera thingy and say, go live and follow the steps. Not sound. Okay. What did you write? Studio. I'll do it later. I'll message you if I can figure it out. Yesterday I had a hard time and that's why I was like in there and I couldn't find the button and I'm just like, oh my God. I'm afraid a dream box wouldn't hold all my stuff. It's not that I'm afraid of a dream box. It's just, I have, thank you, Shauna. Thank you, girl. I really appreciate you. Um, I just can't I haven't, it used to be super easy. Okay. And then I got this new, and then I had such an old Mac that my Mac stopped working with the, with my camera. So then I got a brand new Mac and the brand new Mac had such different software on it. It didn't work with my camera. So it was just like, whatever. I was so over it. I was so over it that I finally just let it go. What happened? A dream box is way too expensive. They changed it all. They change it all the time. It's not meant for a person like me. You'd need two scrap boxes. You know who has one and it looks really great in her space is Ann Lair. Do you guys know Ann? She's so awesome. Maybe I'll do a different beat on this since if it's going to go for the same journal. It shouldn't have like two. Shouldn't have two skulls on it. Um, Anne is so awesome. She has um, she has one, and it looks really great for her. You guys, I have too much. Even with my downsizing and letting it all go, I think I would still have too much for one of those. What's it called? Scrap box. You have a DIY scrap box video. You guys, so you know what else I haven't found, you guys? I have an enormous, an enormous amount of blueprints. I have not seen my blueprints. I do not know where they are. That is... Now that I'm sitting here talking to all of you, I'm like, okay, what am I not, what have I not found? 
my blueprints. I have not seen them. I have not seen them, Sam. I am. I have not seen my blueprints. I have all these blueprints. One woman did it with a wardrobe and shelving units. It looks just like an intense scrap box. Okay. Well, if I find them, APG, I have a huge amount of them. I haven't seen them. They're in a big roll. And I haven't, but you guys, I haven't cleaned out every closet in my house. I haven't done that yet. It could be in one of my kids' closets. It could be in the, the guest room. What was the guest room that my daughter came and lived in with her husband? It could be in her closet. I don't know. I do not know. I do not know. But I was just thinking about it. I haven't found my blueprints. That isn't it funny how like there's weird things that you remember or think about and other things you never think about. I have not my blueprint. There's a bunch of stuff I haven't seen. That's okay. It'll either find. It'll either decide to come up or it'll just stay hidden. Maybe somebody. Maybe somebody jumped into my my mess, stole my blueprints, and ran away. Guys, that mean the most hilarious thing. Somebody thinks somebody got into their blueprints. Somebody stole all my old blueprints. You know what else I have too, but I don't know where they are. I really don't know where they are. And I haven't seen them for a good long while. Because I had some nautical, some charts too. I thought that I had more this size. I don't know what is wrong with me. Maybe I never knew. Good night, APG. Love you, girl. Thank you for coming to hang out with me. I really appreciate it. Uh, and I'll set up my thing tomorrow. I don't know exactly what time it'll be on, but you guys will catch me. <laughs> yes, you people are weird like that, Shelly. And, and you all had an extra piece of cake. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Can you imagine? People tell you all kinds. People are weird, okay? I think I'm going to put this on. Instead of putting it on a clip, I'm going to put it on one of these pins. Brian has blueprints and he has nautical maps and a giant box of old stamps. I'm not allowed to play with any of them. I know because blueprints I don't know about, but nautical maps are kind of hard to get. And yeah, they're hard to get. Maybe I'll just put this one on this, and I'll find a place to pin it in here. This is still all going for the Defy Journal, the Defy, the Defy Auction Journal. Christy, did you send one for the December auction? Guys, my little paper clips are, I don't know if they're just not dry or what. It needs to dry. Good night, Christy. We love you, girl. Bye, Trish. Are you leaving too? We love you, APG. You're a rock star. Love you, girl. You guys should go over and join her channel. You would love her so much. She's hilarious. She is so funny. I, do, I enjoy her a lot. I love, I ledges her. Okay, this is this pen. You had Thanksgiving dessert for breakfast. You're my kind of girl. Although being on this low carb diet, I haven't. I was gonna make myself some lemon pound cake, low carb the other day. I have not done it. I got the lemons. I have everything to make it. I haven't done it. I have a not to denote. I have a not. I have a not. I have not. You know what I should do is I should put. I may do a flash sale. Oh my gosh. Curls. Okay, yesterday was a little rough for me. Okay, I did not feel well. So I was going through my stuff as I usually am going through my stuff right now. Guys, I'm going through it all. This is going to sound ridiculous, but I'm going through it all and I'm petting it all. Is that funny? Is that make you guys like laugh? I'm like petting all my stuff. I'm like, oh, I just have to pet that. One more, just that one other thing. Just pet it one more time. Maybe I'll put it on this way. So 
So that's what I was doing yesterday, but I wasn't feeling so great. I'm feeling better today, but the sinus thing is kicking my butt. You try you decided to do a giant homogenous cereals serious sale on January 1st. That's a good idea. You guys, I don't even know if I'm making Thanksgiving dinner. Okay, that is where I'm at right now. I can't even commit to that. I'd like to say we'll be in North Carolina and I'll be making a turkey there. But I don't know. I'm going to need to put some sort of a, I'm either going to need to put a grommet into one of these, which I don't even know if I even left my crocodile out. I'm going to put a grommet and then I could hang it off or put a grommet and hang it off there or put it on a page. But, or maybe I'll add some more beads to it too if I find some more. Are you guys doing big Thanksgiving dinners? You guys doing huge Thanksgiving dinners? Well, I am almost done with this Defy journal, this journal for the Defy December auction. I'm going to do some extra papers, and obviously I need to find my grommets and deal with that too. Um, I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to make a, I'll show you the cover of the fabric journal if I get it done. Guys, it's so crazy. It's one of these two, it's one of these two quilt squares. Well, one of these two. This one's a red log cabin quilt square or this yellow log cabin, yellow log cabin quilt square. Those are my fabric journals that I'm going to, you know, I'm going to, make for the defy auction if i can i'm gonna make one of them I, I can't commit to two of them guys i can barely even get myself together to do what i'm doing now but i am gonna make one of them and if you guys go back and watch that 11 family at your house deb wow that's awesome good for you No, just you and your head heavy. That's awesome. You guys, I don't even know what I'm doing. I'm doing me. I'm doing me and whatever manages to come for myself for Thanksgiving. I don't know. I asked them the other day. I said, do you guys want turkey, the, the babes and my hottie? And they were like, we don't care. And I was like, okay. So then I said, do you guys want, um, what do you want? So I don't know. I don't know what we're going to have. Just you and your two doggies, you might splurge in and have some make some pizza. Well, I'm not, you guys, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm doing myself. They're having a big dinner. Good for you. Make some pizza. I don't know what I'm doing, girls. It's going to be simple. It's going to be the simplest. Whatever is the simplest is what I'm doing. That sounds fun, though. Just intimate. You know what? Gone are the days in my co I'm cooking for other people to judge me, okay? How many of you guys have like cooked for your family for years, years and years and years? There have bunches of you have cooked for your families for years, cooked and cleaned up and done it all. No moy me, no moy. Right? I did it for years. No more. You know? None. Zero. Nada. Done. Keep it simple. That's right, Deb. Keep it simple. Deb, where do you live in Australia? I have done it. I'm just not doing it anymore. 
And that's why I even said to my partner, I said, if any of the kids want to come for the holidays, that's great, but don't expect some big. Always at your house so they don't have to cook. Oh, man. Yeah. That's you at Christmas, cook, clean, sleep. I don't know, you guys. I don't know. This year is going to be different. And not in a bad way, but just different, you know? You took the last four years off, so you're kind of excited this year. Good for you. I mean, I, I think I've always been a caregiver and always been a server in my life. And I think that now I'm just kind of to the point where I would just like to, like one year, I think we all went out for Chinese food or Thai food, and we were all so happy. And they don't want to eat what you cook. Oh, that, that would make me crazy. That, Deb, that would just totally, like, make me crazy. I would, yep. Hi, Michelle Scott. How are you, girl? Just cleaning up a mess. I made a big old beady mess. Your sale was so rock star. Your stock your stash. I am going to steal some of your ideas. I'm stealing Michelle's ideas. But when I do real sales, not morning sales, not sales where I'm crying, leaving, but if I choose to do them in the future. Stealing Michelle's, pick your price. Love that. Pearl, I have not moved yet. Hopefully soon. Pearl, I'm still purging. Hopefully by the end of the month. Um, it's a little bit more complicated than just packing up and moving. It's a little bit more complicated. Um, I'm stealing your pick your price. I'm stealing your um, your giveaways. If I do real sales in the future, I'm going to steal your giveaways because those are the best giveaways I've ever seen. I'm stealing that. What else am I stealing? I don't know. You got it down, girl. You got it. You got it down to a science, and you do it well. So have you finished packing all your stuff? Or are you still packing it to get it out? And I tried to buy some stuff from your sale. I mean, I got, I got out. I got out, <laughs> which is not a bad thing. <coughs> Queensland, near North Queensland, our Christmases are are one of the two hot, hot, super hot, wet, wet monsoon rain. They usually cook roasts all day and salads. Oh, and you have a cold lunch. Oh, wow. Your iPad was plugged in and it died. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You finished yesterday? Massive. You finished yesterday? Oh, Michelle. Girl, I was just thinking about, I was like, I'm just thinking about what, and I'm not selling much of anything compared to you. I'm just thinking about me and like all of it and just the, you guys have who've never done a live sale, it is not for the faint of heart, <laughs> okay? It is a lot. You think the sale itself is a lot of work, but it's the after part that's even worse. Right, Michelle? The after part is even even worse. It's like, you're like, oh my God, I have to mail out more stuff. You cut fabric one day for 11 hours. I bet it, especially because you were doing those fat quarters. I was like, girl, you are on it. I, I bet you have. Well, if you guys haven't experienced a Michelle Scott live or a I, I won't be on, I, I can, I, if I have my crafting stuff, I can craft on, on the 20th from here. 
When are you doing it? November 20th, which is Saturday. I can craft from here. I can, I can join your craft. What do you call it? Cra not crafting karaoke. What do you call it? And you guys, my head can't think anymore. Crafting, whatever. On the 20th, I'll be over at Michelle's crafting with her. Oh my gosh, you guys, that was, Michelle's sale was so awesome. I would tell you guys, definitely make sure you go over and you subscribe to her channel. Open mic. See, girls, I can't even keep it together to get open mic right. So I'll be there on it for open mic on the 20th. I don't know what I'll craft. Maybe I'll, um, a marathon. Um, maybe I'll fin maybe I'll finish my fabric journal and I'll get that done so I can mail that off. You guys, I'm like so lame. It's like that's what happens when you're just like, okay, I have to do this, and then you haven't done it, and you just keep saying to yourself, I'm gonna do it, and you haven't done it. So I'll come and craft. Do you remember the year we crafted for your birthday? That was like so freaking fun. Michelle and I, Marsha, 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 Abby, and who else came besides me, you, Marsha, 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 Abby? There was somebody else. We crafted for Michelle's birthday one year, I think like 10 hours. I think it was like a 10 hour craft a -thon. And I got up at the crack of dawn to be there for Michelle's birthday. I got up, it was like, it was like six o'clock in the morning or something. It was like my time or five in the morning. And I'm barely up when I'm in there crafted away. I had such a good time. I had so much fun. Yep, those were the days. Those were the days, my friend. We thought they never end. Yes, it was some. Tw it was so fun. So I, so I see from at yes six a.m. My time went crazy cool. So I see Abby moved to Montana. What did Steve get? Like a job? I haven't followed all of it. I just see your pictures. You did a sale for two days and it wore you out. Please. The live sales are not for the faint of heart. You got to be organized. And I'm not so organized right now. I mean, maybe I will be in the future, but now I'm just kind of in move out mode and try to figure out like, I'm keeping it. Am I letting it go? What am I doing? You know, that kind of thing. And um, just trying to keep the commitments I've made, you know, that, that in itself is hard enough for me. No, no, I saw that she had moved, but I didn't I didn't see why. Did they move because Steve got a new job? I was there when she was selling her stuff and selling her house, and I was like, oh, my gosh, that was her dream craft room, right? Her dream craft room. She had an amazing craft room. I'm sure her new craft room will be just as amazing. <coughs> I should put this on something. I don't know what, but I will. It looks like she's loving it. Guys, I don't know if I could live in Montana because it's so cold. I have friends that live there. Yep, you guys go over and join Michelle's channel. You have to. She's super fun to hang out with. And I'm going to craft with her on Saturday night. So it'll be me and whoever else. Who else show, who's showing up? Do you don't know? Same job, change of scenery. I get it. I think it's awesome. Although it doesn't feel so awesome when you're when you're dealing with all of your crap. <laughs> Speaking for myself only doesn't feel so awesome when you're dealing with all your crap. 
and you're dealing with all of the things that you need to deal with. Maybe I have to turn it this way. Duh. A little slow to the draw. Lori B. Kiff. Amanda, Laurel, Janet. Ah, oh, that's so nice. You have 1,500 videos, Tammy? That's awesome. I don't have 1,500 videos. I don't. Michelle, isn't one of your sons getting married soon? Or did he get married and I missed the whole damn thing? Did he get married and I missed it all? Because I'm never okay. I didn't miss it. Michelle, where does it where does he live? I don't remember where he lives. I bet you're super excited. I'd be super excited. Well, I wasn't I was excited when my daughter got married, but I would have liked it if we if it wasn't during COVID, because for us it was really it was ridiculous. It was ridiculous because nobody could come. Did Shannon Green's daughter ever get married? Don't you remember she postponed her wedding too because of COVID? Guys, I'm so out of the loop. I haven't watched enough. I don't know enough YouTube things. So I'm so out of it. Okay, you're saying how off topic, but how hard would you try and pay a bill that the only way is to write a check and use snail mail and I have no checks or stamps? You know what you can do, Val? Um, my partner's done it. You can do it. You can write a check via, what do you call it? How did you pay our bills for, where they send a check from your checking account when you didn't have any? It's What's, online bill pay. It, you do it through online bill pay. If you do it through online bill pay, you can, uh, you don't have to mail a check they mail it for you yeah it gets sent from the company it gets sent from the company and i don't even think you pay did you pay do you pay for well, um that's postage that's, arranged, that's that's arranged on every they either do free online bank no but it, but she has bank of hawaii too aren't do you bank at bank of hawaii camp I don't, how do you say that lejeune in north carolina but the wedding's in tampa oh, okay how far is that from Asheville, Camp Le? I don't know what Le Juin. Le I am. No, I'm good. How far is that from uh, Asheville? Yeah, Val, we had to pay a bill like that. Like, I don't know. You guys, I don't know. Blake did it. I didn't do it. He paid it from his account. Online. I didn't pay it from my account, but we had we had something similar where they only took a check, and I don't have any checks, and he didn't have any checks, and yeah, it was stupid. Yeah, well, then you can do it through there too. I'm sure they, you know, they have to figure something out. Not everybody is all all in the tacky world here. night trish we love you girl thanks for hanging out we appreciate you well i'm not going to stay on that much longer anyway it says five hours oh that's not far at all well i love you girls i will be on tomorrow i don't know exactly what time and 
wallpaper books, fabric, trims, some books, some dyes. Um, I don't know. And random, a lot of freaking random, a lot of freaking random. All right, my lovelies, I, I will see you tomorrow. Um, and thank you guys for coming and supporting me and hanging out with me. It's definitely, I needed a mental health day. This whole, I have been really stressed out. No lying here. Working on my journal for the Defy auction. It's still not too late if any of you guys want to donate a journal. It doesn't have to be some fancy journal. It can be a naked journal. It could be anything. Um, it doesn't even have to be one you made. If you bought a bunch of journals like I have in the past or been gifted some, I'm certainly sent them to there. It goes for a good cause. All right. Love you, ladies. I'll see you tomorrow. And then I'll see you Saturday night with Miss Michelle Scott. Good night.